Air and Space Smithsonian Magazine lets you keep up with it all. Each issue of Air and Space Smithsonian offers you and your children a dazzling look at the world of aviation. It's a world of supersonic jet fighters, dreamy hot air balloons, biplanes, real top gun pilots, MiGs, Mirages, jump jets, the stealth bomber, and lots more. Don't let the next issue of Air and Space Smithsonian leave the hangar without you. A one-year subscription to Air and Space Smithsonian, published bi-monthly, cost only $18. To take advantage of this offer, call toll-free 800-262-4800. Call now so you won't miss the next exciting issue. That's 800-262-4800. The Wolverines, the Red Wings, and the Tigers are all here on WJR. The umpires are headed toward home place for the pregame meeting. I promised you the starting line but we've got something special on the field, providing that microphone works down there. Voices of the Orioles, past and present, are on the field. John Miller, the present uh, number one announcer with the Orioles down there, along with my partner, Ernie Harwell, who was the first uh, number one man here in Baltimore when the Brownies became the Orioles in 1954. Joining him, the longtime voice of Baltimore baseball and football, Chuck Thompson and Tom Marr, who through the uh, latter part of the 70s was a broadcaster for many years. What they're doing is showing some film on the scoreboard right now and uh, using uh, the voices of the past. And I don't think that makes a great deal of sense to us on radio right now. I thought maybe we could go down there and uh, pick up what John is going to be saying. And if that moment comes, we'll do it. But right now, most of it is all video. So let's check out the lineups for the Tigers against Mike Bucina, the rookie right-hander who's won four and lost five. Leading off will be center fielder Milt Tyler. Batting second. At second base, Lou Whitaker. Batting third, the left fielder, Lloyd Mosby. Batting fourth, the DH for the Tigers, Cecil Fielder. Batting fifth and catching, Mickey Tettleton. Batting sixth at first base, Dave Bergman. Batting seventh, playing shortstop, Travis Fryman. Batting eighth, and in right field, Pete Incabilia. And batting ninth at third base, Scott Livingstone. Tigers will have Kyler leading off, followed by, and playing center, followed by Whitaker at second. Mosby in left. Fielder, the DH, Tettleton uh, catching. Bergman at first. Fryman at short. Incabilia in right. And Livingstone at third. Now for the Orioles against the left-handed rookie Scott Aldred, who's won two and lost four. Leading off, playing in left field, will be Luis Mercedes. Batting second, in center field, Mike Devereaux. Batting third, shortstop, Cal Ripken. Batting fourth, the DH for Baltimore, Glenn Davis. Batting fifth, and in right field, Dwight Evans. Batting sixth. Playing first base, David Segui. Batting seventh at third base, Tim Hewlett. Batting eighth, doing the catching, Chris Hoyles. And batting ninth at second base, Juan Bell. Mercedes will lead off playing left, followed by Devereaux in center, Ripken at short, Davis the DH, Evans in right, Segui at first, Hewlett at third, Hoyles catching, and Bell at second. Well, they've got the mic working on the field. Let's go down and pick up what John Miller is telling us. Please welcome back Tom Moore. Thank you, John. And you folks are the greatest fans in America. And this is the greatest town. Thank you very much, John. Thank you, Tom. One of the all-time great broadcasters. I'm sure he'll be in the Hall of Fame very shortly. We're very pleased to have him back for a big full schedule of Orioles baseball this year. Ladies and gentlemen... One of the all-time greats, Chuck Thompson. Thank you very much. Thank you kindly. I appreciate that very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.
Chuck Thompson getting a standing ovation here at Memorial Stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, 50,000 on their feet. If I could have your attention, please. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. None of you, unless you've ever been in this position, can realize how much that means to me. But I'm here tonight to say a couple of words on behalf of another Oriole broadcaster that I shared the microphone with for some 16 years. His name was Bill O'Donnell, and he was as good as you get to be. O'Donnell was one of the better educated of the Major League broadcasters, and his broadcasts were grammatically perfect. He had a great sense of humor and respected by everyone in the trade. And quite frankly, I'll check with my cohorts here in a moment or two, I have never heard of a play-by-play -play sportscaster who was invited by the head coach of one of the nation's great colleges to come in and talk to the football squad before a game. That honor was accorded Bill O'Donnell by Ben Schwartzwalder, the coach at Syracuse. And you can believe me, Mr. O'Donnell did a bang up job. This is the kind of a night that Bill would really love. So, if you don't mind, on behalf of Bill O'Donnell and on behalf of Chuck Thompson, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1954, the Orioles came to Baltimore, and in April of that year, they played for the very first time at Memorial Stadium. The voice of the Orioles that year will be here this weekend as well to broadcast the final game at Memorial Stadium. In the intervening years, he has become a living legend. He's one of the best that ever was. The voice of the Detroit Tigers and the original voice of the Orioles, Hall of Famer, Ernie Harwell. Thank you, John. Thank you, fans. It's great to be back at Memorial Stadium, to be here for the final games. This is a great town. You fans are terrific fans, and I'm happy to be associated with these wonderful announcers again. Thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's another voice who's meant very much to Orioles fans these last 20 years, and no trip to Memorial Stadium would be complete without hearing him give a fan a contract. We'd like him to stand and wave to the fans. He's up in the press box. Ladies and gentlemen, former pitcher of the Brooklyn Dodgers, the voice of Memorial Stadium, Rex Barney. Thank you. Thus, the pregame ceremonies on the field come to an end with a Rex Barney thank you on the PA system here at Memorial Stadium. We have had that meeting uh, at home plate uh, for some time. The players in the uh, Orioles dugout waiting to move out onto the field. So we're delayed here quite a bit here tonight. We're going to have some ceremonial first pitches and uh, involved in that will be Tiger broadcaster Ernie Harwell. We do have a fireworks night here tonight. They have uh, scheduled what they say will be the biggest fireworks ever in the state of Maryland following the game here tonight. Much to our delight, as you well know. <laughs> and uh, the uh, fans, uh, some, uh, they will have uh, close to 50,000 on hand here tonight. 
uh, will be staying around for the fireworks. Well, I guess that's it. Little, rather short tosses. They're not coming onto the field. The umpires line up this way for tonight's game. Behind the plate, it will be Dale Scott. At first, Jim Evans. At second, Dan Morrison. And at third, Tim Welke. We're overdue for a station break. Let's get one of those in here right now. Uh, we'll pause 15 seconds for station identification on the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Now, this is WJR Detroit, home of Michigan's top-rated morning radio show with J.P. McCarthy. Here are the newsmakers, the winners and losers every morning, 6 to 10, on the leader, 760 WJR. Well, the Orioles are moving out onto the field. We'll get this game underway shortly, and I'll be back for the start of it after these words. If you have not yet prepared your will, please listen carefully. Without a will, the laws of the state and not you will determine who receives your property and in what amounts. Who manages the affairs of your estate? Your choice as guardian of your minor children may never be known. Your loved ones could face unnecessary legal costs and needless court delays. Now, for only $12.95, you can make your own will, quickly and safely, with the American Will Kit. You'll receive simple fill-in-the-blank will forms with easy-to-follow directions. The forms were prepared by lawyers to be valid in all 50 states. Order now, and you'll also receive, free of charge, our easy-reading personal protection guide, giving you important tips and special information that can save you money. Join the more than 1 million Americans who have already taken advantage of this special mail-order opportunity. Use your credit card and call now, 1-800-542-2300. Just $12.95 plus shipping. Money back if not satisfied. See package for details. Call now, 1-800-542-2300. It's time to quench your thirst at Kroger because this week they have assorted Pepsi products in 8-pack 20-ounce bottles, two for $5 plus deposit with coupon. Kroger, nothing but the best. This is meteorologist John McMurray, a tornado watch for the southern third of Lowell, Michigan, but at the present time, no severe weather. Stay tuned. If conditions change, we'll advise you. Well, these special days keep uh, going and going here for Ernie and me. Ernie honored again down on the field uh, before tonight's game. Uh, Ernie and I were extremely honored to today be uh, in Washington to uh, have a few moments with the President of the United States, George Bush, and to be uh, honored by the Michigan Congressional Delegation in the Senate office building. It's been quite a day for us, and uh, this three-game series between the Tigers and the Orioles is about to begin. 22-year-old rookie right-hander Mike Mussina, who pitched extremely well in his only other time against the Tigers, uh, back on the uh, last Saturday in Detroit, Messina went eight innings and was very tough. He gave up an unearned run and a home run to Mickey Tettleton. Left after eight innings with the game tied 2-2. Two to two. Tigers wound up winning the game by a score of 5-4. to four. I didn't think he was going to get up here in time, but uh, he made it and ready for the play-by-play. -play. Here is Ernie Harwell. Thanks, Paul, and uh, here we go now. Milt Collis steps in. He's a leadoff hitter, and he takes a strike call to fastball. Six, Mike Mussina, right-hander on the mound. He slipped over that first strike on Milt. Batting uh, 256. Switch batter up there left-handed, waiting. Here's the wind-up. Here's the pitch. He taps it foul into the back of the plate. It'll be Whitaker and then Mosby after Milt. If you threw out a ball, you didn't throw it very far. Tonight. No, we didn't have to. I like that when you just throw it about three or four feet. We yeah. All of the uh, Oriole announcers uh, had a baseball, and they had a catcher for each one of us. Oh, okay. Our own individual catcher, Bob Melvin, was mine, <laughs> the old uh, Tigers, so that worked out great. Strike two, the count on Kyler, leaning and waiting now. Mucina on the mound, goes into the windup, delivers, and it's a fastball high and wide. Oils is catching, Sagi at first base, Bell at second, Cal Ripken at short. Hewlett is at third, Mercedes in left. Devereaux in center, and Evans is in right. Now the right-hander gets his sign from uh, Hoyles, and the pitch is on the way. There's a foul back of the plate. What's that uh, big insignia out there? I hadn't been able to see that right in the middle of the field. Did, did you get to read that? No, I was too interested in... Uh, got, uh, looks like a... It's uh, something about the stadium, 1954 to 1991. Is that a big Oriole there? And yeah. Yeah. 
It's orange, I can tell that. It just says Memorial Stadium and gives the years. Mm-hmm. One, two, the count on leadoff man, Kyler. Here's the pitch on the way. He swings and misses. Oh, that was a pretty good fastball that ripped in and uh, got him on strike. We were able to carry some of the pregame ceremonies from the field. Once they, once they got the mic working, I had them on the air. Yeah. Well, I tell you, that was, a, that was the longest non-working mic for John Miller, wasn't it? Yeah. Great ovation for Chuck Thompson. That was really beautiful to see how the folks here love Chuck. And we had some good highlights uh, on the board out there. Here's Lou Whitaker stepping up now. Batting 282, and the pitch is not counting. Uh, time was called by Dale Scott about the time he sooner delivered that pitch. Sort of a warm night here at the Memorial Stadium. 81, it is a warm night, isn't it? Outfield around to right on Lou. No score, first inning we've just started. The game a little late because of those uh, ceremonies. And the right-handed Mussina kicks and delivers. It's a fastball outside. They've got the third baseman Hewlett wide of the bag over there. And the first baseman, uh, Sagi, is uh, very deep. And he's off the bag, too, on that side of the infield. Wind up by the right-hander. He pitches. There's a swing and a fly ball lifted into short left center. Coming in the left fielder. Mercedes puts it away. And there are two up and two down in the Tiger first inning. Lloyd Mosby getting back in action now. Good to see the shaker back at it. Left hand hitting outfielder stepping up. He's stationed in the left field tonight. Lloyd batting 264 with six home runs and 34 runs batted in. Final series of the Tigers in 1991. Here's the wind-up. The right-handed deals. It's a strike call. Dale Scott said so. This uh, series is a sellout. Some of the uh, far-reaching bleachers are not for sale. They leave those open, I believe. Here's the pitch. It's a fastball in too close. Cecil Fielder waits on deck for the Tigers. Messina looks in now to get his sign ready to go into action again. Here's the kick. Here's the pitch. He takes it. The ball outside. Two and one the count on him. Shaker steps out. Takes a practice cut. Gets back in. Now, um, Mucina, the young right-hander, checks his side again. It's a 2-1 pitch on the way. He swings and fouls it off. That'll be back upstairs, and a gentleman from Towson has a souvenir. Well, we had a nice chat with David Roberts, who works for WBAL News here in Baltimore. He wanted to send greetings back to Mr. and Mrs. Isaac Smith in Detroit. Tell him that, that things are going well for him here in Baltimore, but he's still a Tiger fan. 2-2. Two, two, that's the count on Mosby. He's going to step out. Now back in the batter's box. No score. First inning. Two out. Nobody on for the Tigers. Mucina ready to go into action. He winds. He pitches. And it's a curve high. That'll make it a full count. Didn't go very deep in the count on the first two hitters. But now he's 3-2 on Mosby. Orioles just came down from uh, New York. The Tigers just uh, ventured down from Boston. And now the full count pitch coming up to Mosby. He swings and fouls it away to the screen. Still three and two. After Mosby will get Fielder and uh, then maybe Tettleton in the inning for the Detroiters. A little bit of a breeze of picking up now. We didn't have it before. It's coming, uh, looks to be from the right field corner toward the left.
Here's the wind-up. Here's the pitch. He fouls it away. Back upstairs. Ballpark has changed a lot in its configuration since uh, 1954. A little bit more of a hitter's park now. They've got inside fences. They've got uh, less foul territory than they had in 1954 when this park opened. And the lights are about uh, 200% better than they were then. Here's the pitch. He takes a walk. It was high. Were they really bad, Ernie? Or yeah, what? they were bad lights, and uh, it helped the uh, Oriole pitching a great deal, but it uh, didn't help the hitters on either side very much. Now, they, you mentioned that the foul territory is, is smaller now. They built in additional box seats. Is that it? Yeah, that's what they did. They, uh, the stands didn't come out as far toward the foul lines. They bit, uh, uh, built additional field seats. And that cut down the foul territory quite a bit. Where that wall juts in, where they used to have the tomato plants down on the left field, was that the original wall? Yeah, mm -hmm. oh. that's the original wall. Original uh, edge yeah. of the... Right. Okay. But no end of fences. Here's a Cecil Fielder now. And the big guy takes an inside curveball one. Cecil hit his 44th home run last night, remember, with the bases loaded. 133 runs batted in. He leads the major leagues in that department. And he's batting 261. Man on, that's Mosby with a two-out walk. Scored his first inning in Baltimore. And Mike Lucina, the right-handed deals. There's a fastball. Oh, he jammed him with that one. And Hoyles wants to go out and have a conference with his pitcher. Talking to Chris before the game. He says uh, when it's time for him, just going to be a time of relaxation. He's going home and lay back a little bit. 2-0 to count on Cecil. He might see him swing hard at this one if he gets a good pitch. Standing deep. They've got the Segui holding on the bag over there with Mosby. No score first inning in Baltimore. The Tigers at bat. Here's the set by Mike Messina. He holds it at the belt. He pitches. There's a swing at him. Oh, did he take a cut? He went for it, but he couldn't find it. Great bat speed uh, he generates up there. And uh, Cecil has pretty good balance at the plate, too. Now the 2-1 delivery. Fastball jams him at 3-1 on fielder. Mosby not getting much of a lead off first base. He's just sort of ambling off a couple of steps. Now Mussina ready, delivers, and he walked him. It was high and tight, the second walk with two down. That sets the table for the ex Orioles Tuttleman. He'll be batting left-handed. Outfield very deep on the Tuttle, and I think they're playing him even deeper than they played the fielder. And they pulled around the right. Infield is uh, deep, and they've got the third baseman, Hewlett, very wide of the bag over in that direction. Now they set the pitch, and the Mickey takes a ball low. Diana Trudell of uh, Penn Conning, Michigan. We appreciate her note and her uh, good wishes to Paul and me. Now the set by Mussina, he delivers, and Tettleton takes outside. Well, a little wild streak hit this mm -hmm. young man. He got the first two with ease, and now he has walked the next two and gone 2-0. and oh. So we're going to get a little uh, coaching here from Mr. Jackson coming out from the dugout. K-1-1. 
Kennedy and Diane Weber sending Tiger greetings to their family and friends in the Tri-Cities. They're out here at uh, Memorial Stadium tonight. David Gross and uh, Artie. All the people from Salisbury, Maryland. Artie Abbott, that is. They've been listening to Paul and yours truly on the car radio in Salisbury for a long, long time. Keep them moving down the road. Get <laughs> yeah. those high spots. Conference is over. 2-0 to count. Two men on, two men out. No score when in the opening inning. Bases on balls have set up a threat for the Tigers. Tedlin waits now. With Cena, the right-handed to the belt, and he pitches, and Mickey hits a ground ball towards second base from Bell. He grabs it, bobbles it, throws to first in time, and the side retired. At the end of the half inning, no score. Honey, his fever's worse. Okay, I'll get the medicine. Thanks. Oh, no, we just ran out. And it's two in the morning. Oh, boy, now what? Look... Call Dr. Grant. All right. Ask if maybe she knows someplace that's open. Emergencies are never convenient. That's why Perry has 24-hour pharmacies and drugstores. In fact, Perry is the only drugstore chain in Michigan with 24-hour locations. That's where you'll find us, the Perry Red Coat Pharmacists and the Perrylink Computer System. It makes your prescription records instantly available at over 200 Perry pharmacies around the state. When minutes count, you can count on Perry. And your red coat pharmacist. Hey, Dr. Grant said Perry has 24-hour pharmacies. Where? Well, she said to call uh, 1-800-72-PERRY. Great. Yeah. Oh, honey, yeah? since you're at Perry anyway, yeah. could you get us a loaf of bread and some Milky Ways? Mm. Oh, and maybe some diapers. Perry Drugstores. Come talk to us. We're there when you need us. Working together for quality. Everybody's working together for quality, from the dealers to the vendors, from the UAW to the company. Individuals, parts, meshing. Union management, hourly, salary. The minds, the hands, the hearts. So much has to do with attitude. Of the men and women of the UAW and Ford. We are working together. We have a common focus, and that focus is our customers. An attitude of caring. We care about the work. We care about making good products. A pride in all Ford products. My way might be better than yours, so let me run this bike first, and then listen. When it gets to the end of that line and it rolls off, it's going out the door because it's a finished and fine product. The UAW Ford Best in Class Quality Program. We care about the work. So much has to do with the attitude. And then listen. Working together for quality never meant so much to so many. The Tiger Scroll. WJR. Here come the Burns to bat now against Scott Aldred, the Tiger rookie left-hander. And it'll be uh, Luis uh, Mercedes, the uh, left fielder, to lead it off. Lance and Andrea Batchelder from Ellicott City, Maryland. Out to see their Tigers. They are loyal to the Tigers, even though they live in this part of the country. Mercedes takes a fastball outside. Ball one. He's hitting uh, 216. Here's the pitch on the way. Swing, ground ball, foul just outside the bag at third. We pause uh, briefly for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. WJR Detroit, the flagship station for Michigan football and basketball, as well as Tiger baseball and Red Wings hockey. The lead of the sports in Michigan is 760 WJR. No score. Game scoreless here in the first inning. Mercedes fouls one away to the right field side, and the count is one ball and two strikes on Luis. Mike Devereaux will bat next, and then it will be Cal Ripken. Here's the pitch by Aldred. It's a strike call. He stood there like the house by the side of the road and watched that one go by. Struck him out. Here's Devereaux, the center fielder. Out 
Field plays him uh, straight away. Here's the pitch on the way. It's a fastball high. One out, nobody on. This game is scoreless in uh, Baltimore. We're in the first inning. Foul out of play right down below it. Note from Bob Lewis and wanted to know when did the commissioner's office authorize the use of four umpires in a game. Well, that's really a league matter, the league. And it uh, happened about the 15 to 20 years ago, I'd say, maybe longer. Strike call, yep, a good bit longer. Because used to be three umpires in the major leagues uh, back until maybe after the World War II. There's a high pop-up, and this one is catchable. Bergman in foul territory. It's in his glove, and there are two down. Cal Ripken uh, is winning all kinds of honors. Had about three presentations before the ball game tonight. One of those was the... Most valuable Oriole presented by the Sports Boosters of Maryland. An award named after Lou Hatter, one of her sports writers, the late Lou Hatter, who worked here for many years. He steps in, had that great series uh, back in Detroit. He's hitting 328. He didn't do too much at Yankee Stadium in the games there. Aldred delivers, and there's a foul out of play down below us. Two out, nobody on. We've got a scoreless deadlock here. Aldred, the young man from Michigan, goes into action again, delivers. Pass ball wide. That one got by everybody. Livingstone is uh, playing a deep third base on this guy. Here's the pitch to Cal. He swings and fouls it away. And they're shooting at us up here, Mr. Terry. We're getting bracketed right now. Yes, sir. The next one is the one we got to look out for. One ball and two strikes on Cal Jr. They got all exits when this guy steps up. He hits to all fields. Very hard to defend against. Standing bent at the knees, waiting. The pitch, and he swings and misses. Struck him out. One, two, three. Go the birds at the end of an inning. No score. Hey, watch me trip up this lawn boy salesman, son. You know, you can pick up a few tips from your old man. Yeah, sure, Dad. <laughs> Good afternoon. Can I help you? Uh, yes, we're looking for a mower for the 90s. You know, one that can do it all. Uh, not that they even make such a thing. <laughs> oh, they do, sir. It's called the Mulch and Mow from Lawn Boy. Uh, just testing him, son. As a state-of-the-art mulcher, it feeds valuable clippings back into your lawn. But when the grass is too tall and thick to mulch, it converts to a bagging mower. It even shreds or bags leaves for the fall. Yeah, probably have to be a rocket scientist to convert the thing, eh, boy? Actually, it converts in seconds. No tools needed. Yeah, like I was Thing. Right, Dad. So, have we got ourselves a deal? Yes, but I won't pay a thing until April 1992. No problem. Say what I tell you, son. Got to take control. Uh, Dad. Uh, yes? It says no payments till 92 on the sign. Go do your homework. Oh. See the full line of Lawn Boy Lawn and Garden Equipment at Neyland's Home Center on West Vienna Street in Clio and Fraser Lawn Center on Utica Road in Fraser. And remember, mow now, pay later. No payments on Lawn Boy Mulch and Mow till April 1992. Some people find it surprising that Farmers Insurance, the same organization that provides peace of mind for millions of homeowners and drivers, still has picnics and still celebrates birthdays with homemade cakes. Truth is, Farmers Insurance didn't get to be one of America's largest by being fancy. We did it thanks to hardworking people, innovation, and the promise that America can depend on farmers. See Victor Berchi in Romeo or Edith Cornell in Ypsilanti. Honey Baked Brand Ham, flavored to win at tailgate picnics, victory parties, and all fun gatherings. Fully cooked, ready to serve. Honey Baked Brand Ham. Call 689-4890. The Tigers play on Radio 76 WJR.
Dave Bergman coming to bat now for the Tigers. We've got a scoreless tie in the second inning. David batting 236. Seven home runs and uh, 26 RBIs for Bergman. Vice President Dan Quayle will attend the game here Sunday. He was also present at the season opener in uh, Chicago on the 8th of April. We were at that game at the new Comiskey when the Tigers beat Chicago, remember? Here's a fastball low to Bergman, ball one. Dave Johnson and Mark Leiter will be the pitchers here tomorrow afternoon. And then on Sunday, Bob Malacchi against Frank Tanana. And that will close out the 91 season. Here's the motion and here's the pitch. He takes the fastball outside, 2-0. Oh. Scoreless tie. The Tigers are batting here in Baltimore in the second inning. The right hand uh, Mucina kicks and deals. Bergman fouls it away. That'll reach the seat. Had a great trip over to Washington uh, this morning. And uh, Larry Rosenthal, our host, he's from Grand Blanc, and he wanted to send greetings to his folks back home, and especially to his sister Sherry and a nephew, Jordan. Here's the pitch on the way. He taps it foul in the dirt. Some other stalwarts from Grand Blanc over there in Washington are very avid Tiger fans. Craig Stark, Tom Burke, Arch, a Terranian, Bob Foote, and uh, Jim Stackett. Here's the wind-up down, the pitch on the way. He takes outside. 2-2 Two -two the count on Bergman. Bergman uh, hits the ball to left a good bit, but they also have to figure that sometimes he'll pull it. The left fielder rather shallow. That's Mercedes. Here's the pitch. He swings fly ball center field. That should be caught. Devereaux drifts back, and the center fielder makes the catch for the out. Freeman will be the Tiger batter in this scoreless deadlock. We're in the second inning. Travis uh, finning is finishing up a fine rookie season for the Detroiters. Boy, wherever you go, you hear the ball players on the other teams talk about this guy and uh, talk about what a future he has. You've seen it on the mound to face him, right-hander against the right-hander. Travis uh, leaning and waiting now. Here's the wind-up and the pitch, and he takes the strike. Batting 259 with 21 home runs and 89 runs batted in. They play him deep and uh, straight away. He'll be followed by Incabilia, who's playing right field tonight for Sparky's gang. Here's the motion Messina delivers. It's a hook that misses the outside corner. One and one the count on him. Just about a capacity crowd here at Memorial Stadium. They're gonna pack them in all this weekend. Here's the pitch on the way. Swing, base hit, left field. He ripped that one into left. And that is the first Tiger hit. And Cavillia steps up now, the right hand batting right fielder. And Cavillia hitting a 217, a season that has been heckled by a lot of injuries over the year. In and out of the lineup. Never got a chance to play as much as he wanted to. 11 home runs and 37 RBIs. Remember the Orioles were asking me about that home run he hit in Boston. <laughs> they had read about it. Hitting that light tower at Fenway. Livingstone will be the next Tiger batter. There's a man out and the man out in the score to second. Now here's he set by Mike Musina. 
at the belt. He holds it. He pitches, and Inky takes the strike on the outside corner. Neither team able to score in this one yet. We're in the early going, though. It's the second inning. The Tigers have a man out and the man out. And Kabil is a little uh, weary on waiting on the young right-hander, and he steps away from the plate. Uh, Messina looks over his uh, shoulder at the Fryman, who leads off the bag at first. And uh, Mike delivers. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. Throw to second. He is safe to second. Bell covered, didn't make a very good tag. The throw is a little bit high, too, from Hoyle. It is a steal for Fryman. Number 12 for Travis. Made it a pretty close play at second, but the Fryman slid in safely. Now the Tigers have a man in scoring position with one out, a man at second base. Ryman edges down the line a little bit from second. Here's the set by Mucina. And the right-hander checks it second. Pitches. There's a little tap toward third. Hewlett grabs it. Throws across the diamond to the first baseman, Sagi, for the out. And Fryman, with the ball hit in front of him, has to stay at second base. Starting ninth, third base, Two out, a man in second, and Livingstone, who's given the Tigers a good short season here after they brought him up, will be the batter. Left-hand hitting third baseman. You see, there was a non-roster in Bidey to the 91 spring training of the Orioles. Young man out of uh, Montersville, Pennsylvania. Twenty-three-year-old. He delivers a ball in too close. I feel a little bit to right on uh, Scott Livingstone. The infielders are all back now. Priman uh, leading uh, down from second toward third. Here's the set by Mike. And he pitches. Livingstone hits a drive to right. That'll get a run in. Right field to Evans. Grabs it. Here's Priman coming home. He scores on the single and the Tigers take a one to nothing lead in the second. A sharp RBI single by Livingstone. Gets the Tigers in front one to nothing in the second inning. We've seen him ahead a lot of line drives, haven't we? Yep. Here's the top of the batting order up again now, Milt Kyler. The First base is Morrison, second is Welke, and Scott is third. <laughs> Evans, Morrison, Welke, and Scott. Kyler is up for the second time this evening, batting left-handed against Mike Mussina. And the pitch is a strike. Right-handed, ready to go to work again. Two out and one on, one nothing Tiger lead. Here it comes, and he bumps, but it's foul back of the plate. They've got the Sagi holding on the bag over there with the runner Livingstone, who's knocked in the only run of the game. Kyler's had a few ailments toward the end of the season, but he's back in the lineup now. He's had a fine freshman year, too. Here's the set. Here's the pitch. It's a ball outside and a delayed steal by Livingstone is successful. Hoyles had the ball, was holding it, and the Livingstone broke late for second and made it easily with a stolen base. Play you don't see very often. (laughs) 
One ball, two strikes on Milk Kyler, the pride of Macon, Georgia, leading and waiting. Ah, Lucina goes to the set again. And pitches. There's a ground ball wide at first, fielded by Segui, and he'll make the play unassisted. The side is out. At the end of one and a half, Detroit won, Baltimore nothing. I done. But then the flowers arrived and there was a note with the man that said, Dear Mom, after 15 years of managing us, this job is going to be a breeze. <laughs> Florists turn feelings into flowers. The American Floral Marketing Council. This is meteorologist John McMurray at Tornado Watch for the southern third of Lower Michigan, but at the present time, no severe weather. Stay tuned if conditions change, we'll advise you. Clifton E. Haley, president of Budget Rent-A-Car and a proud member of the class of 61, congratulates the Detroit College of Law for a century of contributions to the study and practice of law. It's a one-to-one -one ball game as the Orioles come to bat in the bottom of the fifth inning against Scott Aldrich. A young left-hander from Montrose, Michigan. Has uh, assured himself a spot in the starting rotation, or at least in the plans for the starting rotation for next year. He got over the hump after uh, spending a short time back in the minor leagues. He had come up and had some problems. A lot of it caused by his inability to throw consistently in the strike zone. But he has looked sharp since the beginning of September. There's a pitch low and inside ball one. Hoyles up one time, bounced out to third. Former Tiger farmhand to Chris Hoyles. Here's the pitch. And it is a strike called. Hoyles got Hoyles from the Tigers right uh, toward the end of the 1988 season when the Tigers uh, had hopes of uh, winning the divisional title and they went after Fred Lynn and got Fred in that last day of August for Chris Hoyle. The pitch from Aldred, it's low. Two and one on Hoyles. Actually, a couple of other uh, minor leaguers also uh, went to Baltimore in that deal. Inside, three and one. Robinson Garces and uh, Cesar Mejia. Three-one count on Hoyles, leading off the fifth inning. Eleven homers, 31 runs be batted in. There's a strike called he was taking, and it's a three-two count on Hoyles. Juan Bell is on deck. He'll be followed by Luis Mercedes in the Baltimore fifth inning. The kick, the pitch. There's a foul back this way. In the sixth inning in New York, 2-1. to one, Yankees lead the Indians. In the sixth inning in Boston, it's 3-2 Milwaukee in front of the Red Sox. Dante Bichette homered in the fourth inning his 15th of year of the year to break a 2-2 tie. Toronto won Minnesota nothing in the fourth inning at Minneapolis. The pitch from Aldred fouled back to the screen. Over the National League in the bottom of the fifth inning, Atlanta three, Houston nothing. Well, yeah, we've gotten the word now, a little more of an update on that one. Uh, through uh, five and a half innings, or through six innings, Steve Avery has pitched a no-hitter against the Houston Astros. 
3-2 pitch from Aldred. A foul fly hit to right field way back up into the stands. After four and a half in Pittsburgh, the Pirates uh, lead Montreal one to nothing. Grayback going after another win against Chris Nabholz, who's a pitcher of the month in the National League for Montreal. 3-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. Aldred uh, got him on a fastball. That's four strikeouts for Scott. One out. Nobody on. Here's Juan Bell. Well, a note on the ticker tonight. The Texas Rangers fired coach Davey Lopes. And the Cleveland Indians have undergone uh, an overhauling. get to that in a moment. Here's a pitch to Bell. He takes a breaking ball, low ball one. The Indians announced that third base coach Rich Dower, the former Oriole infielder, bullpen coach Louis Isaac, pitching coach Mark Wiley, coaching assistant Billy Williams, and hitting coach Jose Morales will not return to the Indians next season. Swing and a foul by Bell, one and one. Isaac, Wiley, and Williams have been offered uh, other jobs in the organization. And the Indians uh, named Gordy McKenzie advanced scout. Now, that's what he was before uh, Mike Hargrove was elevated. Hargrove had been the first base coach. He named manager, and uh, Gordy McKenzie was taken off the road as a scout and uh, inserted as a coach. There's a strike called on Bell. And the Indians announced that bullpen coach Dom Cheaty has been asked to return to the coaching staff in an unspecified capacity. Swing and a miss. Bell went reaching for that one. He is a strikeout victim. That's five for Scott. Three in a row. Two up, two down on strikes. And the batter now, Luis Mercedes. Here's the pitch to him. He bunts toward third. It's a beauty. Barehanded by Livingstone. His throw in time. What a play by Scott Livingstone. He went flat on his chest after releasing the throw, but he got him at first base. The Orioles are out one, two, three. After five innings of play, it's still a tie game. Tigers one, Baltimore one. Fill her up this fall at Marathon. Fill her up for family fun with favorite foods and fuel. Frugal families flock to Marathon for flavorful frosty fluids for festive fall football forays and fantastic fall forest foliage frolics. Furthermore, fill her up with fun foods for the aforementioned forays to fend off fitful famishers. Be forewarned, don't forget, fall is here. Fend off frantic throat requirements by filling up with fresh firing batteries, freezeless anti-freeze, friction-free oil, and full friction snow tires. Finally, forge forward to fill her up with Marathon's famous first-rate fuels, finitely formulated for formidably effective fuel efficiency. Frankly, forego forethought and frequent your favorite marathon this frenzied fall. Fortuitously fill her up with fuels, filters, and fluids for your future field trips and fun foods and flavors for your frisky family. Feel fortunate forever. Find these full-fledged fantasies in one fascinating fortress. Fly to Marathon and fill her up. <laughs> it's fabulous. I'm with the person who puts the honey in New Honey Almond Delight cereal to make it taste deliciously different. Your name? Honey. I should have guessed that. And what do you do? Well, New Honey Almond Delight's full of sliced almonds. Sounds tasty. Crunchy nut clusters mm. and honey toasted flakes. Wow. As Honey Dolliver, I make sure it's just sweet enough. Try some. Mm. Oh, boy, what a great taste. It's a honey of a job. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. <laughs> New Honey Almond Delight cereal. It tastes deliciously different. The Beaumont Clinics of Preventive and Nutritional Medicine are seeking volunteers to participate in the High Blood Pressure Research Project. Interested persons over the age of 18 should call 645-8158. Detroit Tigers, WJR. Lloyd Mosby will lead off the Tigers' sixth inning. It's a tight one here at Counties at the Memorial Stadium. 1-1 one, one tie, Baltimore and the Tigers. Duel between Aldred and Musina. A couple of rookies. Left-handed hitting Mosby up for the third time. He's walked and struck out. Swing and a miss by Mosby. Each team with four hits. Each team with just one run. 
And they both got their runs in the second inning. You've seen a rocks and a kicks and fires. And that fastball misses outside. One and one on Mose. Getting caught up on the scores here. A lot of action going on at the same time. That one afternoon game at Wrigley Field, however, was postponed because of rain. Held it up on the bottom of the third inning and uh, could not resume. The Cardinals and Cubs will play two tomorrow afternoon in Chicago. Swing and a miss by Mosby. One and two. The others in the National League. Bottom of the sixth inning now. Atlanta leads Houston by a score of four to nothing. Pendleton has homered for an Atlanta run. And uh, Steve Avery's got a no-hitter going through six. Bottom of the sixth inning in Pittsburgh. One nothing Pirates over Montreal. In the top of the sixth at Philadelphia, the Phillies lead the Mets two to one. The other two are on the West Coast. Dodgers at San Francisco. Reds at San Diego. Here's the pitch from Mucina, and it's in for a strike called on Mosby. He's out for looking. That's four strikeouts for Mucina. And the batter will be Cecil Fielder. Fielder has walked and fly to deep center field. In the American League, they're in the seventh inning in Boston, and it's 3-2 to two Milwaukee in front of the Red Sox. Eldred all the way against Gardner of the Red Sox. Bichette is homered for Milwaukee to put them ahead 3-2. Bottom of the sixth in New York, the Yankees lead Cleveland 2-1. Mattingly has hit a two-run homer for the Yankees. 2-0 Toronto over Minnesota in the bottom of the fifth inning at Minneapolis. Here's the pitch to Cecil. He takes it high, started to go, and held off. Ball one. Oakland and uh, Texas tied 1-1 in the bottom of the third inning in Arlington. Ricky Henderson has tied the game with a homer in the third, his 17th of the year. The other two games uh, are late starters out on the coast with Kansas City at California, Chicago at Seattle. Swing and a miss by Fielder, 1-1 one one on set. Tigers have won six of the ten meetings uh, with the Orioles so far this year with these three remaining. Need one win to uh, capture the season series. The 1-1 pitch. Swung on and missed one and two on Fielder. The final night game ever in terms of Major League Baseball at Memorial Stadium. The other two in this series coming up in the daytime tomorrow and Sunday. Here's the one-two pitch to Fielder. It's low, ball two, fastball. Two and two on Cecil. Now the motion, the pitch by Musina. He struck out Fielder swinging. Oh, no, he got a piece of that one. Just fouled it, and the Hoyles couldn't hang on. Count stays 2-2, two and, two and Cecil's got another life at the plate. Well, the Chicago Cubs today uh, signed a shortstop Sean Dunstan to a four-year contract. Financial terms not disclosed. Dunstan was eligible to file for free agency after the season. Here's a 2-2 pitch. High, ball three on Fielder. Dunstan uh, this year it, uh, is hitting 260 with 12 home runs, 50 runs batted in, 21 steals. Got a four-year contract from the Cubs. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here in the sixth inning. That's five for Musina, and the batter will be Tettleden. All of the strikeouts have come from the first four in the batting order. Kyler once, Whitaker once, Mosby twice, and Fielder once. Tettleden, one for two. He got an infield hit. A slowly hit ball in behind second base in the fourth inning. A pitch to Mickey. That's on the inside corner for a strike.
Right-hander Mussina kicks and fires. And that's low. Ball one. One and one on Tettleton. The pitch from Mussina is high and away to Mickey. Two and one. Mark Leiter goes for Detroit in the second game of the series tomorrow afternoon. Dave Johnson will be on the mound for the Orioles. He'll be on the air with uh, broadcast coverage at 110 tomorrow. Infield really overshifted to the right on Tettleton. Outfield shading slightly to right. Here's the pitch from Mussina. Fastball is high and away. Three and one. Two out, nobody on here in the Tiger sixth inning. It's tied one to one. Mike Musina trying to square his record at five and five in his last start. There's a line drive hit toward the right field corner. It's hooking. It's a foul ball. Ooh, that was close to extra bases. Let's pause here for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. This is WJR Detroit, home of Jimmy Lodge, J.P. McCarthy's Focus, and Warren Pierce every midday. If you miss a day, you miss a lot. I'm the leader for midday news and entertainment, 760 WJR. count on Tendleton back in the batter's box now two out nobody on and the Tigers sixth inning game tied one to one Mike Mussina ready to work here's the three two pitch foul to back on the screen well a senior vice president's Joe McDonald and Jerry Walker of the Tigers both on hand here for this final three game series of the Tiger season and representing the Tigers too at the final three games at Memorial Stadium festive weekend for the birds the pitch to Tendleton strike call he took it and he's out of there so Musina strikes out the side and we go to the bottom of the sixth inning it is Detroit one, Baltimore one. k has scored. The fans are steaming on the field. And the Tigers have won their first pennant since 19... Ernie Harwell, the Tiger voice for 30 years. A tribute brought to you by Michigan's only member-owned not-for-profit financial institutions, Credit Union. No, that's not Ernie. It's Russ Hodges, Ernie's partner for the 51 National League playoffs between the Giants and the Dodgers. Russ is calling the legendary shot heard round the world, Bobby Thompson's dramatic ninth inning home run. Ernie, meantime, was doing play-by-play -play on coast-to-coast -coast television. He simply let the picture tell the story and said, it's gone. Of course, these days, back on radio, 40 years later, Ernie has quite a distinctive home run call. That one is low! 51 homers for Cecil. This tribute to Ernie Harwell has been presented by credit unions and the more than three and a half million credit union members in Michigan who fondly say, thank you, Ernie. Do you know there are only 44 sounds in the English language? 44. And when you learn these 44 sounds called phonics, you can read and spell almost everything. That's why Hooked on Phonics is so successful. We've set these 44 sounds to music, making learning to read simple and fun. So get Hooked on Phonics and take the mystery out of learning to read. Call 1-800-ABCDEFG. Falling leaves, Indian summer, honey-baked brand ham, the smells and tastes of fall. Enjoy these carefree days. Surf ready-to-eat honey-baked brand ham, a delicious fall treat. Join JP for Focus weekdays at 1220 on WJR. Scott Aldred tuning up to face the Orioles here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Got a good one going here tonight, a 1-1 ball game. Mike Devereaux will be the first to face Aldred. The only Baltimore run came uh, when Glenn Davis led off the second inning with his 10th home run of the year into the bleachers in left field. 
found out why the two sections of bleachers in left field and right field are unoccupied here tonight. It's because of the fireworks. They fall out from the fireworks. They cannot seat anybody in those sections. Devereaux is one for two. He's singled in the third inning. Four hits off Aldridge. Tigers have just four hits off Musina. Left-hander kicks and fires. And that slow one is in for a strike on Devereaux. Luis Gonzalez had a two-out double for Houston in the top of the seventh inning to break up Steve Avery's bid for a no-hitter. There's a ball. It's one and one now on Devereaux. There's a, a grounder to short throw to first in time. Ryman gunning down Devereaux. One up and one away. The batter now, Cal Ripken. Cal today, as Ernie pointed out, named the winner of the night at her most valuable Oriole Award. There were eight uh, writers and broadcasters who uh, regularly cover the Baltimore Orioles who did the voting, and all eight first-place votes went to Cal Ripken. The pitch to him. He checked his swing, and he didn't check in time. It's a strike on Ripken. Other Orioles who got votes, because they voted on a 5-3-1 basis, had uh, three names, or they could vote for three. Runners up were uh, Todd Froworth with 10 points, Mike Devereaux with eight, Greg Olson with four, Randy Milligan, Bob Malaki, and Mike Flanagan with three, and Joe Orsalak with one. There's the pitch. There's a ground ball to third, caught by Livingstone near the bag. His throw to first almost pulled Bergman off the bag, but he stayed on, and uh, long enough to get Ripken, it's two down. There's Glenn Davis. Slugging right-handed hitting first baseman. He's in as the DH tonight in uh, Baltimore's lineup. Is Homer in the second inning? Tied the game at one, and we're still tied one to one. Aldred into his motion. The tall left-hander fires, and that is a breaking ball. Low ball one. Aldred ready. 1-0 pitch. Fastball in for a strike on Davis. Forty-seven thousand nine hundred eighty-three. That's the paid attendance figure here tonight. Fly ball hit deep but foul to right field. Uh, in with the stands. One-two count. Now I'm Glenn Davis. Here's the motion, and the pitch from Aldred. Fastball is high. And a lead on the count. Two balls, two strikes. Davis out of the batter's box for a moment. Gets back in. Here's the motion. The pitch by Aldred. High and away to Davis. That'll bring the count full. One one tie as the Orioles bat in the bottom of the sixth inning. Two out, nobody on base. Full count on Glenn Davis. The pitch swung on and missed. Aldred got him on an off-speed pitch. His changeup. That's six strikeouts for Aldred. He sets him down in order, and we go to the seventh. Still tied. Detroit one, Baltimore one. Hi, this is Dwayne Rayo, president of Metro 25 Tire Centers. It's Metro 25's We Must Be Crazy sale. We'll beat any advertised price. We'll beat any unadvertised price. We'll simply beat any price on any tire in town. And now we'll give you a car phone and a Meritech mobile service free. There's no gimmicks, no purchase necessary. Now that's crazy. How about these crazy prices? Steel belted radials as low as $14.88. Uniroyal Tiger Paw all seasons as low as $15.88. Stop in and get your free car phone on a Meritech mobile service. 
only Metro 25 has over a million tires in stock, so you know we can beat everybody. And now Metro 25 gives you a free car phone on Ameritech mobile service just for stopping by. It's the We Must Be Crazy sale at Metro 25. Metro 25's free phone offer is for a limited time only. No installation needed. Offer is transferable. Subject to credit approval. Minimum 12-month service commitment with Ameritech mobile service required. New cellular customers only. See Sunday's ad, the yellow pages, or call 1-800-METRO-25 for the dealer nearest you. Tiger Baseball on WJR is being brought to you by the Michigan Lottery, Harry Drugs, the Herb Lumber Company, Napa Auto Parts Stores, ABC Warehouse, and by Tuffy Service Centers. Stay tuned for more Tiger action on the flagship station for Tiger Baseball, 760 WJR. It's time to head over to Kroger where you'll find John Morrell whole boneless pork loins for $1.99 a pound and they'll slice it free. Kroger, nothing but the best. This is meteorologist John McMurray, a tornado watch for the southern third of Lowell, Michigan, but at the present time, no severe weather. Stay tuned if conditions change, we'll advise you. This is a well-pitched game so far. 1-1 one, one tie, four hits on both sides. Two rookies facing each other, Musina and Aldred. Musina ready to face the Tigers here in the seventh inning. And back for the play-by-play, -play, here's Ernie Harwell. Thanks, Paul, and uh, Dave Berg on the lead it off. The pitches have really taken over in this game. Each team got a run in the first, in the second inning, and that meant it. It's a breaking ball low to David, and they count the ball one. Bergman has flat out twice, once to center, once to right. The Tigers got a lead in the second on a one-out single by Fryman. He stole second and came home on a two-out single by Livingstone. Glenn Davis tied it in the second with a home run, and that's all the scoring so far. Fast ball in on the Bergman, and the count evens on him at one and one. One run, four hits, and no errors. That's the total on each side. 47,983 paying to see this one tonight. At Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. And the pitch. It's a ball outside. Two and one on Bergman. Right-hander Max Lucina on the mound now for the Birds. Uh, goes in the action. Two on pitch. Bergman takes. It's a strike. Two two. Brady Johnson is in Virginia. He's a longtime Tiger fan, sending greetings to his family in Kalamazoo. Bergman digs in, 2-2 pitch. He swings at the ground ball to short. Ripped into his glove side, has it. Fires over to first to Siggy, one up and one down. Here's Fryman, who scored the Tigers' only run. He's had a single, and he's hit into a double play. Tomorrow afternoon, these uh, teams resume the series, and it'll be Dave Johnson for Baltimore. Mark Ryder will be on the mound with the Tigers. It'll be a day game on Sunday to close out the season. And Frank Tanana against Bob Malaki in that one. Here's the pitch on the way. He swings and misses. Here's the pitch now, and a cut and a foul that came back and uh, hit Jim Evans on the hand. Jim, uh, Jim has a school for umpires out of west. It's in uh, Arizona, it's like Joe Brinkman has one in uh, Florida. Two strikes, the count on Fryman. Baltimore with a few good young pitchers on their roster. Swing, fly ball, set of field. Going back is Devereaux deep at the fence. Makes the catch with about two feet to spare. Two out, nobody on. Here comes in Kabila. He's bounced out twice. Once to third, once to short.
Here's Inky stepping up now. Trying to do something about this 1-1 deadlock. The Tigers have nobody on the bases, and they've got two men down in the first half of the seventh inning. He stands very deep. He likes to move into the pitch. And he takes the ball. He's opened up that stance a little bit now, not as much as he did a couple of weeks ago. But he's gone back to a more moderate uh, face the pitcher stance. Garth uh, Rosenberger sending uh, back home. Still a, an avid Tiger fan. There's a swing and a miss by Incavilia, one and one. Pete digging in, waiting on uh, Musina's next delivery. It's been a pitcher's game here tonight at Memorial Stadium. Swing a little tapper, hit toward third. Hewlett to the glove side, grabs it, throws to first. The Tigers go down one, two, three in the second straight inning. The bird bat in the seventh. The game tied one to one. Working together, building day by day. For all things you need along the way. We'll understand and lend a helping hand. Ask us, we're Herb Lumber. Don't put off concrete projects anymore. At Herb Lumber, we want to make it easy on you with great savings on ready-to-use Quick Creep Concrete Mix. Now's the time of year to start concrete repairs and projects, and it's all on sale. For sidewalks, steps, patios, driveways, or setting posts, Quick Creep makes it easy. Just add water and you're set. Herb's experts are on hand to help you pick the cement mix that's right for your project. But no matter what your needs, all Quickcrete cement mixes are ready mixed and on sale in 80-pound bags. You don't have to be a professional to use Quickcrete either. Pick up our free literature on how to use it. It's easy. Anyone can do it with Quickcrete and Herb Lumber. Ask us. Ask us. We're Herb Lumber. I'm taking my family on a road trip, but first, I want to be sure the car is up to it. At One Auto Center, feeling safe is a priority. Sears. That's why Sears offers the free road handler brake inspection. It combs your car brakes from rotors to drums. I'm telling you, peace of mind means everything. And should your brakes need servicing, Sears Road Handler Brake Service is so complete, the shoes and pads are guaranteed for the life of your car. Coast to coast, ask a Sears brake specialist for details. Hey, who's going to back you better in Sears? Golf the new 18-hole championship course, Elk Ridge in Atlanta, Michigan. Tee times available. Call 1-800-626-4355. Sponsored by Honey Baked Ham Company. Here come the Orioles to bat. It's a 1-1 tie. Seventh inning. We've had this uh, big crowd take the old seventh inning stretch. Scott Aldred has been very effective out on the mound. He yielded one run, the home run by Davis. Leading off in the second, and that's been it. Here's Dwight Evans, the right fielder, who's gone 0 for 2. He's flied out twice, once to right and once to left. The better at the plate against the rookie left-hander of the Tigers. And Aldred kicks and deals. Here's a breaking ball in for a strike. Aldred has uh, struck out six. He's not walked anybody. Been a sterling performance by him. Good to have Danny Ball back on the trip with us. Dan's been uh, ailing a little bit, but he's feeling better. Fast ball outside. Jerry Walk, Joe McDonald are both here looking over their charges. I'm not talking about the hotel room charges. <laughs> <laughs> Aldred uh, pitching to the better now. The 1-1 one -one pitch to Evans. He swings and misses. Pulled the string on him and Evans swung too early. Aldred trying to get his third win. He has a 2-4 record this year. Swing, fly ball, center field, not very deep. Drifting in is Kyla. He's there. He's got it. And there's one up and one down. That's eight in a row now for Aldred. And the Baltimore team's gone down in order. 
ever since the single by Segui in the fourth inning. David has two for two. He's the only man in the game with two hits. Game tied, 1-1 one, one in the seventh. And uh, Segui, batting right-handed, takes the ball outside. In that big ball game in Atlanta, Atlanta leading 4-0 over Houston there in the seventh inning. Avery working on a shutout, had a no-hitter for a while, but he's lost that. Pendleton hit a, an Atlanta home run. There's a pitch in too close. Well, the Dodgers are at San Francisco tonight. Now Audred gets his sign, goes into action. There's a breaking ball in and hit the strike zone. Max Stewart sending greetings to his uh, mother, Gloria Stewart of Harvard Springs, Michigan. A longtime uh, Tiger loyalist. All red, ready to go now. He winds, he pitches. Here's a ground ball wide at third. A deep shortstop. Fryman has it. The throw won't be in time. It'll be an infield hit. Segee gets his third hit. Uh, there were eight outs between his uh, last two singles. And now Tim Hewlett has gone 0 for 2 will be the batter. He's fly to center and struck out swinging. Well, the Tigers are 6 and 4 against the Birds this year. 4 and 3 at Detroit and 2, at, two out of 3 here at Memorial Stadium. Bill Gunnison beat them twice. The only pitcher who's done that on the Tigers. Here's Hewlett, 0 for 2 for the night. A man out and the man out. The runner's going. The pitch is swung on. Hit in the air to right center. Back goes Kyler running hard. He's got it. Now the runner, Segui, going back to first. But the ball's been dropped by Kyler. And he throws it into Fryman at second base. And that will be a force out. And it was a crazy one. Kyler raced for the ball in the right center. Looked like he might have it. Segui was running on the pitch. Yeah. And they called, they called it an out first. And then after Kyler dropped the ball, he threw it into Fryman at second base. So it'll simply be an out. The umpire said he kept the ball long enough and really dropped it in the act of throwing. So what looked like a force out turns out to be just a simple put out by the center fielder, Kyler. That was a crazy looking place a gee had rounded second base. He was trying to come back to first. <laughs> then when the ball was dropped, he, he thought it was dropped and he had to head back to second to avoid what he thought was a force out. Here's a pitch high. Oil's at the bat now, and they count his ball two on him. Now what we have in the uh, scorebook is just a simple put out by Kyler for the second out. Retiring Hewlett, and Segui staying at first base. Here's a ball outside. Not too many outfield put outs for the Tigers tonight. Two in this inning and two in the second. That's been about it. 1-1 one, one tie when the Orioles seventh. There's a fastball in on the Hoyles for a strike. Three and one the count on him. Scott Aldred had a couple of tours with Toledo this year. Had an eight and eight record down there. Now the 3-1 delivery is a breaking ball inside. He walked him. That's the first walk. Man on first to the man on second. And Juan Bell, the number nine hitter, steps up. Juan Bell. Seventh inning tie, one to one. Stay tuned after the game. Paul's going to have the other scores for you.
Scott Aldred now sets him to use, and Bell takes the ball outside. Is only the first. This is the first time they've had two men on base at one time for Baltimore. They got their run in the second inning of the home run by Glenn Davis. Ground ball back to Scott. He gloves it, loses his cap, flips the ball over to first to Bergman, and the birds are out. Tigers batter the eighth. The game deadlocked one to one. We're back with more beer talk, and our next caller up is Ray from Pittsburgh. Ray, what's up? Yeah, I was playing golf the other day. Hey, how'd you do? Don't ask. Okay. But anyway, as the day went on, conversation naturally turned to beer. Naturally. And we were talking about ingredients and stuff, and there was one ingredient we couldn't figure out. What's that? What's a hop? Ray, I believe it's somewhere between a skip and a jump. What? <laughs> Just kidding. little brewing humor there. No, Ray, hops are small green buds that grow on vines and they're used to season beer. In the case of Budweiser, a special blend of the best hops from both the U.S. and Europe are used to give Bud its distinctive flavor and aroma. And Ray, here's a little trivia to lay on your golf buddies next week. Okay. Only the female hops are used. Oh, I'll give you something to think about. Somehow I believe you will. And now a word from our sponsor. And that's Beer Talk from Anheuser-Busch St. Louis, Missouri, world's favorite brewer. Do you know there are only 44 sounds in the English language? 44. And when you learn these 44 sounds called phonics, you can read and spell almost everything. That's why Hooked on Phonics is so successful. We've set these 44 sounds to music, making learning to read simple and fun. So get Hooked on Phonics and take the mystery out of learning to read. Call 1-800-ABCDEFG. Internationally known sitarist Ravi Shankar brings his musical magic to U of M's Hill Auditorium at 4 p.m. Sunday, October 20th. Tickets are available at the Michigan Union Ticket Office and all Ticketmaster outlets. Sponsored by the Indus Medical Foundation. How does Detroit spell great sports? W-J-R. The bat now in the eighth inning, and the man who knocked in their only run will be leading off at Scott Livingston. Livingstone is single and fly to center. One for two for the night against the excellent pitching of Mike Mussina. Here's Scott digging in now, and the right-handed eels. It's a breaking ball outside ball one. Each team got to run in the second inning, and that's all that they've done here in this one. Well, Cena ready to go to work again now, and Scott awaits. Here it comes. He takes a low fastball, 2-0. Oh. Here's the look in now by the young right-hander. He kneels as a ground ball hit towards second. Bell charges, gloves it, flips it over to first. In time, he got him by half a step. That's eight in a row for Mussina. In that game in Atlanta, Houston got a run of the eighth inning. But the Atlanta Braves lead him four to one. Atlanta batting in the last half of the eighth. Avery is still in there. He's gone all the way. Here's Kyler batting left-handed and... Coming up with one for three this evening. Gekla in the Tiger bullpen, the tall right-hander. Some good pitching here tonight at Memorial Stadium. There's a fastball low. He started the month and laid off the pitch. One run, five hits for Baltimore. No errors. Tigers, one run, four hits and no errors. We're in the first half of the eighth inning in Baltimore. Fireworks after the game tonight. Here's the pitch. He bumps and misses. One and one on milk. Just about a capacity crowd here tonight. Kyla spreads out at the plate. Waits on a 1-1 one -one delivery. Swings at the ground ball to third. Good stop by Hewitt. Throw to first. He got him. Oh, that was a beauty. 
He was playing in close on him. Tyler hit a ground smash between the bag and the fielder, and Hewlett dived for it, got it, and threw him out. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. This is WJR Detroit with traffic reports every 10 minutes, mornings and afternoons. And before Michigan home games with Captain Dennis Dubach and his new Bell Jet Ranger on the leader for traffic 760 WJR. Lou Whitaker at the plate. Lou has gone 0 for 3. He's fly to center, struck out, and uh, bounced to second base. This is the spot where Lou would uh, swing for the long ball. And he takes this when he didn't swing for anything on that one. Strike one on Lou Whitaker. They've got the outfield deep to right. And the infield way back all the way around. He'll be followed by Mosby. 1-1 one, one tie, eight inning, strike one count. Mike Lucina delivers, and Whitaker looks at a breaking ball low. The count evens one and one. 47,983 in attendance tonight at Memorial Stadium. Expecting about that many for the next two games each time. Saturday and Sunday afternoons. Here's a fastball in for a strike. He took it. One and two on Lou. Very pleasant tonight here in the Crab Town. Mild and pleasant on 33rd Street. Now the motion and the pitch. Swing, fly ball, hit to fairly deep right center, Devereaux. There makes the catch. And the birds batter the eighth, tied with the Tigers one and one. ABC Warehouse presents Ridley and the Chief. Chief, I got it, I got it! Lie down, Ridley, maybe it'll go away. Chief, I got an idea. An idea? Yeah, let's take a survey. A survey? Yeah, everybody's taking surveys to try and show their prices are low. Ridley, we don't need a survey at ABC Warehouse. Everybody knows that our prices are the closest. Picture here will be Brady Anderson. He's won one and lost four. This is his 30th appearance, and he's had two saves. Appeared in the uh, game uh, last night and uh, pitched at one inning and gave up one hit and a couple of runs. Each team got a run in the second inning. Since then, the bats have been helpless on each side. Well, it's always front of it. You don't know whether the pitching is great or the hitting is weak. Or sometimes a combination. Well, here's the announcement about Anderson. Anderson hitting 230, two home runs, and uh, 24 RBIs for the former Boston Red Sox player. Devereaux will follow him, and then it'll be Cal Ripken, Jr. This game belongs to the pitchers. It's been a beauty. It's Memorial Stadium, Baltimore. left hand batting Anderson at the plate. Takes it to strike at the outside corner. Fine performance by Aldridge. Wind up by Gekler. He deals. Anderson looks at a low one, one and one. Stay tuned after the game. Paul's going to have the other scores for you. Swing a line drive right to the glove of Whitaker for the out. Died a little bit on the way to the glove. One up, one down, and here is Devereaux. Spring and a miss. He took a pretty good cut at that one.
Steve and Marge Barnes uh, saying greetings to the folks back home. They're out here tonight. Here's a breaking ball outside. 1-1 one, one tie. We've got a dandy going here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. This is the final night game in this ballpark. Here's the pitch. Swing fly ball. Lifted into short right. Here comes Encabilia. He's got it on the run. Two up, two down against Gately. Cal Ripken Jr. stepping up. Well, we were talking about Whitaker swinging for the fences in this situation. And Mr. Ripken Jr. will be doing the same thing perhaps here in this situation. He is struck out, bounced into a force to short and down to the third. He's over three tonight. Dropped him down to 326. Gengler ready to go to work now. The wind up and the pitch to Cal. He takes a slider down in the way. Olsen and Gibson are throwing in the bullpen. Olsen for Baltimore, Gibson for the Tigers. We might see some bullpen uh, usage here in the late stages. Gengler is the first change in that direction. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Low with a fastball. He threw that one hard. Ball two. The count on Cal Jr. Back to Nevada's box now. He likes to stand deep and move into the pitch. Here it comes. He takes it small. Ball three. Glenn Davis is waiting on deck. He had a home run in the second inning for the only Baltimore run in this 1-1 tie. Now the 3-0 delivery to Cal Ripken. It's on the way. He swings and misses. 3-1 the count. Steps out. Takes a little time getting back in. Nothing but zeros up there since the second inning when each team got a run. Here's a pitch. Swing on the ground ball to Whitaker. Routine play over to Bergman. He got him and they go one, two, three against the new pitcher, Gateway. Next inning on tap, the Tigers come to bat it to one, one time. When the Johnsons of 3714 Walnut Street needed help with emergency medical care, we were there. When the Wagners of 435 Maine asked about coverage for their son at the University of Oregon, again, we were there. In fact, for over 14 years, Health Plus of Michigan has made health insurance simpler and more convenient for thousands of Michigan families by offering more benefits, more advantages, and better service. That's how we became one of Michigan's largest managed health care systems. Take it from the Johnsons, the Wagners, or even the Kinsellas and Scarpettis. There's no better way to manage your family's health than through Health Plus. And now we also provide more opportunities to join. Many Michigan employees from large and small companies can choose Health Plus as their health plan. Call now and find out how your family can join the Health Plus family. In the Detroit area, 1-800-848-4844. Or in Flint, Saginaw Bay City areas, 1-800-332-9161. Health Plus. One family helping another. Hello, I'm J.P. McCarthy. Join me Monday morning. We'll do some quarterbacking with Gary Moeller, George Perlis, and Mike O'Hara on the Lions. Remember, too, the Tigers close out the season Sunday. Sparky Anderson and I will wrap it up on Monday. And Sunday, from Baltimore, it's Ernie Harwell and Paul Carey's last Tiger game. Be listening, too, for the sound of Bob Rotti warming up with a high note. If he breaks the glass, give me a call, and I'll give you a pair of Bob Rotti tickets. Only on our show Monday morning here on WJR, where you don't miss a thing. Hockey players at National Sports Center, you'll find names like Bauer, CCM, Cooper, Micron, and more. Get the lowest price at National Sports Center in Windsor. Sticks, skates, protective equipment, all duty-free. Detroit Tigers, WJR. Ron Morphy leads a 
now for the Tigers. Now there's a change in the Baltimore lineman in the outfield. Anderson uh, goes into play left field. He's batted for Mercedes and will stay in there to replace him. And here's Mosby at the bat. He's walked and struck out twice. Here's a ball outside on Lloyd. Ball one. Matt Messina has gone all the way and he's pitched brilliantly. 1-1 one, one tie in the ninth inning. After Mosby, it'll be Fielder and then Tuttleman. We're in the heavy part of the Tiger batting order. And the Baltimore right-hander checks his sign with his catcher Hoyles and works again. Swing and a high fly that should be an out. It's in right field. Evans is there. It's in his glove for the out. One up and the one down. And here comes Cecil Fielder. With a walk, the fly to center, the strikeout. Talk, we were talking about the, this being the final night game at Memorial Stadium. And I had the privilege of broadcasting the first night game in this ballpark. On April the 21st in 1954, the Orioles lost 2-1 to one to Cleveland. Bob Turley had a no-hitter going into the ninth inning for Baltimore. But lost the no-hitter on a single by Al Rosen. And then lost the game on a two-run homer by Larry Doby. Here's a pitch high for a ball. One run, five hits for Baltimore. One run, four hits for the Detroiters. Field is trying to break that deadlock now. And Cena into the wind-up delivers. Slider wide, and the count is 2-0. Stacy Aldred wants to say hello to the folks back home. Here's the motion, the 2-0 pitch. Swing and a miss. He gave it the full treat at that time. the count on the big guy Cecil Fielder and here it comes he takes it the ball low that was a close one some of the umpires who paid to get in uh, thought it was a strike the 3-1 delivered to Cecil. Swing and a miss. Oh, ho Swinging for the Moondock. Well, I'll say one thing about Cecil Fielder. He doesn't cheat himself with the plate, does he? He gets a full cut. Now the count's full on him. 3-2 with the one out and nobody on. The 1-1 tie in the ninth. Fielder digging in. Messina goes into the windup. He pitches. Fielder takes a walk. It was inside. That's the third walk off the Baltimore right-hander. The first Tiger runner since Kyler's single in the fifth inning. Brady's will run for Cecil. Tettleman will be the batter, the uh, left-hand uh, hitting catcher. He's left-handed uh, tonight. He's a switch batter, as you know. We've got the infield and double play depth against Mick. We've got a ninth inning tie, one to one at Baltimore. Johnny Paredes on the mound. They'll have Sagi hold on the bag with him. The outfield will be deep on Tettleman. You can count on that. Messina ready to go to work. Take a lot more time now. Looks over at first base. Goes to the set. Holds it. He pitches. And Tettleman takes the ball outside. Another game I remember. The first American League championship game. I was broadcasting that one. 
here at Memorial Stadium on October the 4th, 1969. Paul Blair dropped the perfect two-strike bunt down the third baseline, scoring Belanger. And the Orioles beat the Twins 4-3 in 12 innings in that thriller. There's a strike call. They had the stands about one-half full for the playoff. The first playoff ever in the American League. The birds just didn't draw them in those days. Boog Powell in the home run of the ninth inning off Jim Perry to tie that game 3-3. And then the Orioles went on to win it. Here's Tatlin now batting at a 1-1 situation. Swing and a miss. Big hefty cut by Mickey, but he couldn't find it. Hope you'll join us tomorrow afternoon. Uh, Mark Leiter against Dave Johnson in that one. Tatlin digging in. The one, two pitch is coming. Here it is. Run a start. Doesn't go. The batter, Tatlin, strikes out swinging. The ladies start at the second and then the scamper back to first. That's the seventh strikeout for Messina. And Dave Bergman will be the batter. Well, Mr. Messina, the Stanford graduate, has certainly done a job. He's held off the Tigers with one run and four hits. Stolen base by Priman turned out to be a key play and got that uh, first Tiger run in. He scored on a single by Livingstone. And here's Bergman at the plate. And today takes the ball outside. Ball one. Tigers and the Birds are all knotted. One to one in the ninth inning at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Bergman digs in, bend of the knees, run it goes, pitches a strike, throw to second. He is out at second base. And the Birds bat in the ninth in the one one time. After six sales calls. Thank you for your time, Mr. Peck. Three canceled appointments. Oh, sure. Of course I understand. 143 endless miles of road. And a sandwich, the contents of which still remain uncertain. Motel 6 knows you only want the things you value, like a clean, comfortable room at a great price, and AT&T long distance. Because no one has more ways to help you when you travel. And the quality and services of AT&T help you keep in touch. Which is important to you. Hello? Hi, honey. Good to hear your voice. Oh, it's good to hear your voice, too. In fact, there's little you value more on the road, except perhaps a good night's sleep. You'll find AT&T Long Distance at Motel 6 and thousands of other popular accommodations across the country. AT&T, how can we help you? For a limited time, you can get free Rawlings baseball equipment, like bats, gloves, and tote bags, when you buy Ortho lawn and garden products, like Weed Be Gone, Rapid Grow, and Ortho Floor. It's easy. All you have to do is send your proof of purchase. Then we'll send you Rawlings baseball equipment. So don't get left out. Hustle down to your local Ortho dealer and get the details today. Whenever you see an ad for any new car, think about the new 92 Olds 88 because it's all new and already at your Oldsmobile dealer showroom. Oldsmobile. Start your morning with J.P. McCarthy, 6 to 10 on WJR. One one tie last half the ninth inning. Baltimore coming to bat. It's been a dandy here. And we've got a final now from that game in Atlanta. Atlanta beat Houston 5-2. That'll put a little pressure on the Dodgers. 
as they battle the Giants tonight in San Francisco. Any big details on that game? No. Nope. Uh, yeah. Nothing special. Steve Avery gets the three hitter. Got his fifth straight decision. And help from Pena in the ninth inning. Glenn Davis, who provided Baltimore their only run with a home run leading out the second, will lead off in the ninth inning against Dan Gakler, who took over in the eighth. And uh, Glenn hit a little tap foul. The ball came up and hit him, and then the ball bounced out toward the plate, the mound. Final from the American League, uh, Milwaukee beat the Red Sox in Boston 3-2. Well, the Shanaway family of Monroe, Michigan, uh, now living in uh, Beccaria, Pennsylvania, sending greetings back home. Now Davis digs in against uh, Gickley. Here's the wind-up, the pitch. He takes the ball low, breaking ball. One and one. One run, five hits for Baltimore. One run, four hits for Detroit. No errors in the game. It's been a well-played game and a very close one. Here's the pitch. It's a ball low and off the middle tentative. Waiting on a two-on delivery. Takes a strike on the outside corner. It's even on him at 2-2. The last half the ninth in Baltimore, Davis leading it off for the birds. The game tied one to one. Waiting on a two-two pitch. It's three and two now. He curved him low and away. Uh, Gakler on uh, enough of the spot now. He's got to come in with a pitch. He does not want to walk this man and put the winning run on base. Uh, he doesn't want to give him a big fat one that it can hit out of the ballpark either. So he's got to figure out something on the mound. Now he winds. He pitches. Here's a ball outside. He walks him. Very selective there, Mr. Davis. He took a close pitch, but it was wide of the plate. First man to reach base since Gakler took over. We'll get a runner. Orsalak to third base, and Evans will be the batter. Evans has uh, flat out three times, uh, once to each of the outfielders. Orsalak at first, he represents the winning run in this game. Evans at the plate, let's see whether they want him to bunt or not. Gakla up on the mound, the tall right-hander gets his sign from Tuttleman. Evans waiting, he spares the bunt, he bunts toward first base. Bergman feels the ball, flips it over to Whitaker, the sacrifice moves, goes to Mike, the six runner in the second. Sadie will be the batter. He's had the three for three as a right-hand hitter. Now he's batting left-handed. Orsalak on second. He represents the winning run tonight in Baltimore. Well, we get the word from the press box that that's a first, the first sacrifice by Dwight Evans this year.
McGee will get an intentional walk. Here's a run if it scores does not make any difference at all. The Tigers strategy is to put him on and set up a double play situation. And also a force out at third or second. Sparky is a great proponent of the intentional walk. He's going to use it right here. Martinez is waiting on deck. That's Cheeto Martinez. And he will be inserted as a pitcher to Fihuda. Here comes Sparky. That means probably a left-hander. Cheeto Martinez coming in. And it'll be Gibson for the Tigers. To try to hold off the birds in this ninth inning with the game tied 1-1. Now well, we're going to have a first pitching change or the second pitching change for the Tigers. Uh, Dan Gakeler had come on to begin the eighth inning. Gakeler leaves now with one out, two runners on. We win an inning and a third in relief of Scott Aldred. And a couple of walks, one of them an intentional pass. Setting up a scoring opportunity here for Baltimore. Now the left-hander Paul Gibson trots in from the bullpen. And as he makes his way to the mound, we'll take time out for this word. When you need a part for your domestic or imported car, light truck, heavy-duty truck, or farm equipment, come to Napa first. You can spend a lot of time looking for a part, but Napa is where you'll find it. Every Napa store has the support of the largest auto parts distribution network in the country. With over 125,000 part numbers and a nationally computerized inventory control system, we have the part you need at the price you want to pay. Our people are different, too. At Napa, you'll find knowledgeable, trained professionals who can answer your questions and will take the time to help you get it right the first time. And Napa parts are the highest quality, built to last, and guaranteed wherever you travel by the Napa National Warranty Program at over 6,600 Napa Auto Parts stores. Parts for your car or truck, heavy-duty truck or farm equipment, national warranties and trained professionals. Come to Napa first. Because at Napa, there are no unimportant parts. Call 1-800-LET-NAPA for the Napa Auto Parts store nearest you. A new Tiger pitcher, Paul Gibson, is uh, beginning to tune up. And uh, the Orioles are going to counter that move of inserting left-handed hitting Cheeto Martinez with a left-hander Gibson taking over. They've gone to their bench again and are going to use that... Leo Gomez, a right-handed hitting uh, third baseman. Almost like it was set up this way because uh, Martinez was hitting for the third baseman, Tim Hewlett. Let's pause here for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Well, this is WJR Detroit, home of Michigan's most accurate weather forecast. From the staff of meteorologists at the WJR Weather Center in Michigan. From the leader for weather, 760 WJR. Now Gibson has won five and lost seven. He'll be facing the right hand hitting uh, Leo Gomez. For Paul, his 67th appearance of the year. Five wins, seven losses, eight saves to his credit. He's in with two men on and one out in the bottom of the ninth inning. The Orioles threatened the threatening to uh, win this one in the bottom of the ninth. Gibson uh, off the mound, checking his defense now, see how they're going to play it. Back up the hill and uh, back at the bike. Here's Ernie. Uh, Gomez, uh, Leo Gomez, batting 233, has uh, 16 home runs and 44 runs batted in. They've got two men on, one man down, one-one tie. Last half the ninth. Gibson bluffs the throw, and the runner, Orsalak, gets back safely. You see, set by the left-hander, Gibson. Gomez takes it, a ball high. Well, our good friend Joe Maxwell, the engineer back of the studio, working his last game with us. We want to thank Joe for all his expertise and friendship and loyalty over the years. 
Waiting on the 1-0 pitch. Gomez takes it. Is a ball in too close to an O. Gibson digging himself a hole here with two men on. The birds are threatening to put it away here in the ninth inning. Set by Gibson, he deals. Gomez swings at the fly ball to right. And Cavillia going deep. He's there. He's got it. Tag at second. Orsadak takes third. The throw comes in on one hop to Fryman in the middle of the diamond. And the Orioles have runners at the corners with two down in the ninth inning. Chris Hoyles you up next. The right-hand batting catcher has gone over two and had a walk. About the third and struck out and walked. Young man from Eastern Michigan. Now Tattleman looking into the Tiger dugout. Man on first, man on third. Sagi is at first. Orselak is at third. Two down, ninth inning. Game on the line, one to one. Gibson gets his sign from Tatlin. The outfield is straight up and deep. Gibson sets, he pitches. There's a strike, he got a fastball in there. They miss the score from Atlanta. The Brave beat Houston tonight, five to two. The Dodgers in San Francisco playing tonight in San Francisco. Martinez against Black. They have not yet started. Now the pitch. Swing and a foul to the screen. Two strikes on Hoyles. Now he steps out for a moment. Bregman will not hold on the bag with Segui at first. Chris Hoyle's waiting. Wayne puts the ground ball on the right side. Whitaker has it. Throw to first. We go to extra innings. As Gibson does the job in the ninth. And the tag out of the tenth in a 1-1 tie. Hi, we're talking with Harold Filler, owner of Harold's Pizza Express, which has just made a world record 1,000 deliveries in one day. Harold, how'd you pull it off with only one van? Well, it's easy. You see, I keep my driver on the road at all times. But when he stops for gasoline, he only goes to a marathon station to fill her up. Why marathon stations, Harold? At marathon stations, you can fill her up four ways. Mm -hmm. And it cuts down on the number of stops you have to make. Four ways? Yeah. First, you fill her up with high-quality marathon gasolines. That Super M Premium really makes the van get up and go. Wow. <laughs> Next, when the van needs an oil change or any automotive products, the driver can get it done right there. Mm -hmm. And marathon stations offer professional service, which helps get that driver out on the road a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. Finally, when he gets hungry, marathon has snacks and soft drinks. Why doesn't the driver just sample the pizza in the van? What? And eat up my profits? Remember, there are four ways to fill her up at a marathon station. Stop by today. Marathon, an American company serving America. What does it take to be a mountain man? Do you need to be a mountain man? Well, I This is meteorologist John McMurray at Tornado Watch for the southern third of Lowell, Michigan, but at the present time, no severe weather. Stay tuned if conditions change, we'll advise you. Ah, 
Tigers to one run in four hits in a nine-inning stint. Gomez takes over at third. Bergman will be the Tiger batter to see what he can do about breaking this 1-1 deadlock. And we'll all enjoy a hearing again from Paul Carey. Our dirty thank you. Dave Bergman will lead off the Tiger 10th inning. Bergman was batting when uh, runner Johnny Paredes tried to steal second in the ninth inning. And he got cut down for the final out of the inning. The pitch from Olsen and the curve is high and inside. Ball one. Messina went nine innings for the Orioles and did a heck of a job tonight. One run, four hits. He walked three, struck out seven. There's a fly ball left center field racing over is Anderson, the left fielder, and he makes the catch. Devereaux in the area as well. One out on the Tiger 10. Here comes Travis Freiman. Freiman is one for three. He singled and scored the only Tiger run in the second inning, coming in on the single by Scott Livingstone. It's been a pitcher's night here at Memorial Stadium. Olsen, a ace reliever, kicks and fires, and that breaking ball is low for a ball. Excellent curveball pitcher, Greg Olsen. He sets and delivers. Another breaking ball in for a strike, one and one. Olsen has won four and lost six. He has 31 saves to his credit, an earned run average of 3.28. This is his 71st appearance of the year. There's a breaking ball in for a strike, one and two. Now on uh, Travis Bryman. Fans on hand here tonight to uh, watch baseball and fireworks. And the fireworks are going to have to wait. There's a pitch in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes. Now on Primus. Two finals in the American League. At Boston, the Brewers beat the Red Sox 3-2. to two. That keeps the Tigers' hopes alive of uh, gaining second place in the American League East. A Tiger loss tonight would mean Boston... And clinched at least a tie for second place. Here's the pitch. And it's a ground foul. Freiman's almost swinging in self-defense. That was a breaking ball coming in on his fist. In high. And uh, he took a cut at it anyway. The other final at New York. Cleveland also got a 3-2 victory. Jim Tomey homered with a man on in the top of the ninth inning for the Indians. That's his first major league home run. And it was enough to give the Indians a 3-2 victory. 2-2 pitch. That's high. Ball three. Full count now on Freiman. Bottom of the eighth inning in Minnesota. And the Toronto Blue Jays lead the Twins 4-1. to one In that warm-up for the playoffs. In the eighth inning in Texas. It's a 3-3 tie. Oakland and the Rangers. There's a breaking ball in for a strike. Freiman is caught looking. Two out, nobody on. And the batter will be Pete Incavilla. Incavilla has been up three times and each time has grounded out to third baseman Hewlett. Now Gomez is in playing third. One one tie, top of the tenth inning here in Baltimore. Orioles are 6 and 11 in extra inning games. The Tigers are 11 and 4. They pitch for Olsen. That's a high fastball. Well, the last time Mike Mussina pitched against the Tigers, it went into extra innings. The Tigers wound up winning that one in 10. On a game winning double by Lou Whitaker. Here's the pitch, and it is a strike call. That's the game that saw Baltimore. Score a couple of runs on the top of the 10th inning. The Tigers came back to score three in the bottom half. A three-run double by Whitaker. A ball and a strike on Incavilla. Goals and ready. Fires. And there's a strike call on Inky.
Two down, nobody on top of the 10th inning. In Kavilla, out taking a practice cut. Olsen uh, has the sign he wants. Here's the one-two pitch. Swung on, missed, he's stuck in. Oh, uh, Olsen has it going for him. That was his fastball. He gets his second strike out of the inning. Tigers go down one, two, three in the top of the tenth. We go to the Baltimore half. It's all tied up. Detroit one, Baltimore one. This is Daniel Pinkwater. My neighbor Roy is the most careful thinker and cautious shopper on earth. He studies consumer articles. Before he buys a pair of shoes, he reads at least three magazines and ponders for two weeks. It took six months of study when he bought a new TV. Whatever he does, he knows exactly why. There's no emotion involved. I just buy whatever Roy buys. I figure after all he's done the research, he's totally logical. So you can imagine my surprise when Roy, Mr. Rational, told me his reason for getting his car serviced by a Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealer. They've got ESP, he says. ESP is an extrasensory perception, I ask. No, ESP is a genuine Ford extended service plan, Roy says. I never have to pay more than $50 for a covered repair, including major ones, and my plan gives me a rental car reimbursement while my car is in the shop overnight. That's fantastic, I say. Merely logical, Roy says. Ford and Lincoln Mercury quality care. It may be your car, but it's still our baby. Gibson uh, tuning up to face the Orioles here in the bottom of the 10th inning. Gibson came on in relief of Dan Gakeler with two on and one out in the ninth inning and uh, got the Tigers out of that jam. He got Leo Gomez to fly out the right. And then uh, Chris Hoyles bounced out the second to end the inning and to send this one into overtime. Scott Aldridge started and the rookie left-hander went seven innings pitched extremely well. He allowed one run on five hits. He walked one, struck out six. Dan Gakeler took over to begin the eighth inning. And uh, Gakeler set down the side in order in the eighth. He gave up a walk to the leadoff man, Glenn Davis, in the ninth inning. He was sacrificed to second. And then after Segui was intentionally passed, Gibson took over and got out of the inning. Here's Juan Bell leading off the tenth for Baltimore. Bell is 0 for 3 tonight. He's popped to short, struck out, and bounced out to the pitcher. Right-handed hitter, the pitch to him, and he takes a strike from Gibson. Third baseman Livingstone here in the late going is near the line and right near the bag, too. Well, the Dodgers-Giants game is underway. The Dodgers did not score in the first inning. The Dodgers trail Atlanta by a half game now in the National League Western Division. Atlanta a winner over Houston tonight, 5-2. One one pitch. Now there's a strike called. One and two on Juan Bell. He'll be followed by Brady Anderson and then Mike Devereaux. Bell in the number nine spot in the batting order. Wind up by Gibson. He pitches. There's a hard smash. That's Simon in the left center field. A base hit. Bell takes the turn and holds it first for the leadoff hit. Now the Orioles for the second straight inning get their leadoff man on base. Ryman dove for the ball, but it got under his glove and on into left center field. Here's Brady Anderson up for the second time. He lined up to uh, Whitaker his first time up, pinch hitting in the eighth inning. Left-handed hitter against the left-hander Gibson. Livingstone in tight at third. Bergman holding on the bag right now. Now Anderson backs up. Bottom of the 10th inning here in Baltimore. Game tied at one. He spurs the bunt, takes it outside. Ball one. Anderson kind of hovers over the plate. Slightly close stance. The throw goes to first. Bell gets back. Now 
Todd Gibson leans on the knee, has the sign. Here's the pitch. And it's bunted down the third baseline foul. One and one on Brady Anderson. Anderson gets back in the batter's box. He spent some time in uh, Rochester at the end of the season. End of Rochester season. Hit 400 there. There's a bunt popped in the air foul. Tendleton under it makes the catch. And the Orioles fans don't like that. Oh, so Anderson trying to sacrifice pops a bunt to the catcher. And uh, here is Mike Devereaux. Devereaux has gone one for four tonight. He singled in the third inning. Off the starter, Aldrin. Bell at first, one out. One run, six hits for Baltimore. One run, four hits for the Tigers. Short lead at first for Bell. Look there by Gibson. He pitches, and it's outside. Ball one on Devereaux. Devereaux has power. 19 home runs he's hit this year. 59 runs batted in. Bell lengthens his lead, his lead and draws a throw, but he hops back to the bag easily. Maybe you remember Devereaux from uh, last year against the Tigers in July. He homered in three straight games at Tiger Stadium. Here's the pitch. It's outside. 2-0 on Devereaux. Cal Ripken is due up next for Baltimore. The pitch from Gibson. Foul to back behind the plate. 2-1 on Devereaux. Uh, Devereaux from the Dodgers across the first. That was in spring training of 89. Trading Mike Morgan to the Dodgers. Here's the pitch from Gibson, and that's low and away. Three and one. Well, he does not want to walk this man. Moving uh, the runner, Bell, in scoring position with Ripken due up. 1-1 one, one tie, bottom of the 10th inning in Baltimore. Here's the pitch. There's a foul out of play behind first base. This big crowd of 47,983 hanging around because of baseball and fireworks tonight. Got a great game going, and then they say the best fireworks show they've ever had at Memorial Stadium coming up after that, after the game. Full count on uh, league. Montreal beats Pittsburgh three to one. Jones, uh, the winner in relief. Expos uh, got uh, two runs on a homer by Spike Owen in the top of the ninth inning, breaking a one-one tie, and that was enough to give them their three-one win over Pittsburgh. Two-two count on Whitaker. He swings. There's a ground ball to second. Bell has it deep at second. They throw to first, and Whitaker is out. And the Tigers go out one, two, three for the second straight inning with Olsen on the mound. We go to the bottom of the 11th inning, still tied up. Detroit one, Baltimore one. Grand Hotel.
Grand Hotel, may I help you? Grand Hotel, may I help Grand Hotel, may I help you? Everyone's talking about what goes on behind closed doors at Grand Hotel. I want to watch you undress. Does your wife let you do that? I have to borrow 5,000 more. You just have the money by midnight tomorrow, or you'll simply disappear. I cannot dance tonight, and I will never dance again. But, madame, you have never left in the middle of a performance. The necklace belongs to the ballerina, room 510. You get it while she's at the theater. <laughs> you could be a lot of trouble to a girl like me. I want to stay here and make love to you again and again after that. My God, nobody's that young. Please, I have a reservation. Forbidden passions, stolen glances, and most of all, breathtaking dances, all at Grand Hotel, the musical. The winner of five Tony Awards, directed and choreographed by Tommy Toon, with the Tony Award-winning Best Dancing. So call now for your reservations. Now through October 20th at the Fisher Theater, for tickets 645-6666. This is meteorologist John McMurray at Tornado Watch for the southern third of Lowell, Michigan, but at the present time, no severe weather. Stay tuned. If conditions change, we'll advise you. Got a new pitcher taking over for the Tigers. Jerry Don Gleason becomes a fourth Tiger pitcher to work. He's just arrived at the middle of the diamond where he'll have eight warm-up tosses. But Paul Gibson went an inning and two-thirds in relief of Dan Gakeler. He did not allow a run. And uh, Paul gave up two hits. He walked one and uh, struck out none. Good outing for Gibson. And now J.D. Gleason uh, will uh, take over. Get out the old trusty scrap uh, stats book and uh, take a look. See when uh, Gleaton was in there last and what he did. He pitched uh, last night, of course, at Boston in a 10 to 5 victory for the Tigers. Came on to work the ninth inning and uh, set down the side one, two, three, lowering his earned run average to 4.17. Gleaton. Did not see action against the Orioles during that uh, Baltimore series in Detroit. Oh, uh, Jerry Don has not faced the Orioles since uh, much earlier in the year. Uh, back on the uh, 22nd of May was the last time Baltimore saw J.D. Gleaton. And in that contest on the 22nd of May, won by the Tigers 9-5. to uh, Gleaton pitched an inning a thir and a third of uh, shutout relief. At the last four outs in the ball game, relieving Mark Leiter. Todd Froworth is uh, working in the bullpen for Baltimore. It'll be David Segui leading off the 11th inning for Baltimore. And Gleaton ready pitches, and it's a foul coming off the plate umpire, Jim Evans. And he's flexing that left leg. Gleaton has won three and lost two. Has two saves to his credit. The redhead uh, has appeared in 46 games. The pitch. Strike call. Two strikes now on Segui. Gomez is on deck. And he's scheduled to be followed by Hoyles. One one tied. Bottom of the 11th inning here in Baltimore. The pitch from Gleaton. There's a line drive right to Whitaker's glove. He just raised up and uh, snagged it. One out in the Baltimore 11. Here's Leo Gomez. Gomez came in to pinch hit in the ninth inning with two on, one out, and hit a fly ball to right field. 16 home runs, 44 runs batted in for Gomez. Gleaton's pitch is a high fastball, ball one. The pitch from Gleaton in too close. 2-0, oh, they count on Leo Gomez. Now the kick, the pitch by Gleaton. There's a foul back on the screen under the booth. That'll make the count two and one on Gomez. Mm -hmm. 
One out, base is empty. Jerry Don working from the set. Pitches. It's high. Ball three. Jim Evans trying to correct the scoreboard all along. They're uh, one short on the ball count. 3-1 count on uh, Gomez. Batting with one out. Base is empty. Gleaton's pitch, and that's ball four. He's on with a walk. Oh, Gomez reaches on the base on balls. And the batter will be Chris Hoyles. Hoyles is 0 for 3 plus a walk tonight. Broward still working in the bullpen for Baltimore. He may be coming on the next inning if uh, Gleaton gets him out here. 1-1 one, one tie, bottom of the 11th. Gleaton's pitch, and that's a strike called on Hoyles. Gleaton looking in to get the sign. Here's the pitch to Hoyles. That's over but low, and it's a 1-1 count. Hoyles, when playing for Eastern Michigan University, set a uh, record uh, there for Eastern with 19 home runs, 70 RBIs in the 1986 season. And the Tigers drafted him that June. Gleaton straddles the rubber. Now Hoyle steps out. Gleaton gets set. Checks the runner first. Short lead there. The pitch. There's a line drive foul down the right field line. Just out of the reach of Bergman, who is coming off the bag. He was holding on with Gomez. One ball, two strikes on Chris Hoyles. final from Texas the Rangers got a run in the bottom of the ninth inning and beat Oakland four to three Oakland had a couple of home runs Ricky Henderson and Harold Baines homered for the A's now they set and the pitch by Gleaton it's in the dirt good stop by Tendleton two and two We've got four finals now in the American League. The two West Coast games and this one over on the East Coast. The only ones going in the American League. Short lead for Gomez. The pitch. There's a fly ball hit to right field. Should be caught. Incomedia backing up a few steps. Waiting for it. He's got it. Playing it halfway. Gomez returns to first. Well, there are two out. And the batter will be Juan Bell. Bell is one for four. He singled his last time up. And leading off the 10th inning, got as far as third base, and that was it. As the Orioles loaded the bases in the 10th. There's a strike called on Bell. Livingstone guarding the line. He's right next to the bag there at third. Uh, backs up a couple of steps. Gomez gets his short lead at first. Great and ready pitches. And the breaking ball is in for strike two calls. Leaping quickly ahead of Bell. Now what's he going to give him? Mosby jogging in place out in left field. Here's the pitch from Gleaton. And it is a low one. Bell uh, laid the bat out there and threw it back just in time. Younger brother of George Bell. Now with the Cubs, formerly with the Blue Jays. The pitch to one. He takes ball two, two and two. Man on first, two out in the bottom of the 11th inning. It's a tie game on this Friday night in Baltimore. One to one. 
Three piece pitch foul to back to the screen. Remember the experiment they had? They were trying Bell at shortstop, the Orioles were a couple of years ago. And Cal Ripken at third base. Thought it might uh, help prolong Cal's career and make use of the talents of uh, Juan Bell. Didn't work in spring training. Here's the pitch. There's a foul into the stands in right field. New supply of baseballs brought out. Two balls, two strikes on Bell, batting with Gomez at first, two out. The pitch from Gleaton. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. So Gleaton does the job in the 11th inning. No runs, no hits, a walk, no errors, and the Orioles lead one. We go to the 12th inning here in Baltimore. It's still a tie game. Tigers one, Baltimore one. It's your conscience. Give me a break. I'm on vacation. Aren't you worried about your business? What's the word? My partner's in charge. Well, what if something happens to him? Nothing's going to happen. It could mean a fortune in taxes and the business on the auction block. Now you're making me nervous. That's the idea, Stan. You've got to plan for the future. And I'm not talking about your next vacation. How can you protect your business against unforeseen events? With proper planning and life insurance from the CNA insurance companies, independent agents who represent CNA can help help you in a way other property casualty agents can't with expert estate and business planning advice. That's because CNA is one of the few companies with consultants on staff who can help you avoid a forced sale and protect your heirs with intelligent estate tax planning. All right, already. Now can I get back to my vacation? Hey, at least you get a vacation. Ask your independent agent about the CNA insurance companies. CNA, for all the commitments you make. Ernie and Paul. New pitcher for Baltimore warming up, Todd Froworth, a submarining right-hander. Greg Olson did an outstanding job in his two innings. He uh, faced six Tigers, got them all, three on strikeouts. This is a long one here in Baltimore tonight to get this final weekend of the season underway. Extra innings, and we are moving into the 12th inning with the game all tied up at one to one. It's been Musina for nine innings, Olsen for two. Musina gave up one run on four hits. And then Olsen was perfect in his two innings. And now the side armor Todd Froworth takes over. He has done a fine job in his first season in the American League. Froworth has won seven and lost three. He's making his 50th appearance of the night here tonight, or of the season. He has three saves to his credit. And Froworth has an earned run average of 1.66 and opponents are hitting a mere 184 against this uh, submariner Lloyd Mosby will be the first Tiger to take his practice at uh, Froworth Mosby uh, hitless the Tigers haven't had a hit in the fact since the fifth inning 1-1 one, one tie. The 12th inning begins, and back for more work at the mic. Here is Ernie Harwell. Right. Paul Carey ready to go now. It's been all pitching. Each team got a run in the second. That's been it. It's Mosby. And the right-hander deals him a breaking ball low on the Mose, and the count is ball one. Mosby, then Paredes, and then Tettleman in the Tiger throw. Here's a pitch. Mosby swings. Ground ball to short. Ripken goes to his right, has it. Flips it over to first. Just in time to get him. Normally, you see Ripken uh, come over the top on a throw like that because he has to get a little bit more on it and has to be a little quicker, but he threw sidearm that time and it almost cost him, but mostly was nipped by a half a step. Tony Phillips will be batting for Johnny Parady. Parady came in to run for Fielder after Fielder walked in the ninth inning. And he was at this uh, spot, the designated hitter, but he'll give way to Tony Phillips for the quick batter batting left-handed.
One down in the 12th. The Tigers are tied with Baltimore one to one. Broworth, the right-hand uh, submariner, ready to go to work now. Tony Phillips digging in better than he's waiting. Here's the pitch to Tony, and he takes the strike. There's the fastball. Tigers got their run in the second on a single by Fryman with a one out. He stole second and came home in a Livingstone single. Davis hit a home run for Baltimore that same inning, and that's been all the scoring. Nobody has scored since. Swing, fly ball, left field. This one should be caught. Anderson drifting over. He's got it. There two down. That'll leave it up to Tuttleman if the Tigers are going to score in the 12th inning. Mickey, against his old team, has bounced the second single and struck out twice. Baltimore, one run, seven hits, and no errors. The Tigers have one run, four hits, and no errors. The Orioles had some threats going in the late innings. They left the two men on in the ninth and three men on in the tenth inning. There's a strike called. He got a fastball. One to one tie in the 12th at Memorial Stadium. The final weekend for this old ballpark on 33rd Street. There's a wide one from Proworth and they count one and one on Mickey Tuttleman. In that Dodger game, they are now in the third inning and the Giants lead the Dodgers 3-0. High pop foul. This will be in the seats. Oil's come over, but it's about four rows out of his way. You missed the earlier score from Atlanta. Atlanta beat Houston the 5-2. to two. A couple of home runs for San Francisco in the first inning. Clark with one on, number 29. Williams with nobody on, number 34. Off uh, Raymond Martinez. Black is pitching for San Francisco. It's 3-0. The Giants with the Dodgers batting in the third. Tuttle in at the plate, waiting on a one-two pitch now from Proworth, and uh, here it comes. He takes the ball outside, 2-2. Two -two. Well, most of the bird faithful have stuck around for this one. Now the set, the pitch, Mickey swings, fouls it away over toward his dugout. That pitch got in on the hands on him. Afternoon game tomorrow, afternoon game Sunday. That will be the finale here. Now the pitch on the way. Swing, line drive, set of field, and coming hard, Devil Road to make the catch. One, two, three. Go to the shorties. The birds bat in the 12th, still tied one to one. What do you do when you need to be doing something else? Shopping, running errands, but you want to be listening to the Tigers on WJR. Easy. Listen to Tiger Baseball while you shop. If you run a store or business, putting Tiger Baseball on can bring customers in. Drop us a card at 2100 Fisher Building, Detroit 48202, or fax us at 875-8760, and let us know that you'll have WJR and the Tigers playing in your store. During the Jimmy Lawn Show, the Warren Pierce Midday Magazine, and Sports Wrap with Frank Beckman, we'll mention your name on the air, letting loyal Tiger fans know that they can hear the game at your location. And you'll be registered to win one of two NEC AF2000 fax machines. Winners will be drawn at random. Prizes provided by NEC. The contest is brought to you by Michigan Bell, Michigan's conduit to communication, and by NEC with the business class quality you demand. Remember, if you run a store or company, Tiger Baseball means business. From the leader for sports, 760 WJR. Michigan's source for afternoon information is the WJR News Center, 4 to 615 on Radio 760. Old, old Dusty Road by uh, Stevie Wonder on the PA here. An old uh, Ron Miller song from Motown. And uh, Gleaton uh, seeing if he can uh, stop the birds in the 12th inning. One run, seven hits for Baltimore. One run, four hits for Detroit. And the Baltimore is coming to bat with the top of their batting order in the 12th. That'll be Brady Anderson, Mike Devereaux, and the Cal Ripken, Jr.
Here's some uh, finals from the American League tonight. Milwaukee beat Boston 3-2. Cleveland beat New York 3-2. Toronto over Minnesota 4-1. Texas trounced uh, Oakland 4-3. Uh, Conseco did not have a home run tonight. Kansas City, California, no score there in the fourth. Seattle leads the White Sox 1-0 in the second. In the National League, the Cards and the Cubs rained out today. Doubleheader on Saturday. Atlanta beat Houston 5-2. Montreal over Pittsburgh 3-1. The Phillies edged New York in 10 innings 5-4. San Francisco 3. The Dodgers nothing in the third. And Cincinnati and San Diego are tied 1-1 in the fourth. So you're up to date on all the games. And at the plate now it'll be Brady Anderson. Brady uh, came in to replace uh, Mercedes as they pinch it in the eighth inning and he's gone over two cents there. The former Boston Red Sox player, Brady Anderson. Left-hander against the left-hander here at Memorial Stadium. It is a 1-1 tie. Beaton uh, taking time out there on the mound. It's been Aldred, Gakler, Gibson, and Bleaton for the Tigers. The pitch is a fastball, low ball one. Jerry Don, one of those uh, double names from Texas. J.D., the ball players call him most of the time. Fires a fastball on the corner for strike one and one. A warm and pleasant night for the baseball game here at Memorial Stadium tonight. Now Brady waiting. Here it comes. He swings and misses. One ball, two strikes. Aldred was very strong in the starting assignment. He went seven innings, allowed one run. And all the bullpen crew has not allowed a run. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on a high hard one. Gleaton gets his second strikeout. And now Devereaux had a single in the tenth inning. And also one of the third will be the better. He's had the two hits in five trips. This is his sixth turn at the plate for Mike. Gleaton uh, looks him over. Jerry Don goes to the set even with the bases empty. And Devereaux takes a curve that hooks across the plate. Livingstone is uh, guarding the line at third. Gleaton kicks and fires. There's a strike. He got a curve over on the other side of the plate. Baltimore Hughes, three pitches. Bustina, Olsen, and Froworth. No scoring in this game since the second inning. Outside, he missed the corner. Pretty good pitch. One and two. Here's the set by J.D. The pitch is a strike called. He is out for excessive window shopping. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger baseball network. This is WJR Detroit, home of Michigan's top-rated morning radio show with J.P. McCarthy. Here are the newsmakers and winners and the losers every morning, 6 to 10 on the leaders, 760 WJR. Cal Ripken. At the plate now, Cal Ripken, the big, strong right-handed batting shortstop without a hit all night long. Here's the pitch. It's a strike on the outside corner. Ripken is struck out, hit into a force, bounce to third, bounce to second. And the fly to right. That gives him 0 for 5. Tigers could not stop this guy the last series he played in Detroit. Gleaton to the set to pin. Ripken takes the breaking ball in too close. One and one. San Francisco batting in the third. They lead the Dodgers 3 0 out there. At candlestick. Ripken taps one foul over toward his dugout. One ball, two strikes on Cal. Riding out on the bus with the Jerry Walker, the new general manager of the Tigers, recalling the days he pitched here in Baltimore, he pitched for the Orioles from 57 till about 1960. 
just about the time the franchise was developing. Swing, fly ball, lifted to right in the corner. And Cavilia goes over. It's a fair ball. He can't get it. He plays it off the wall. Lifting the round second to third. The throw is not in time. was a slicing drive down the right field corner. And Cavillia raced over into the corner in the right field. And the ball was fair by inches. He could not play the carom. It bounced behind him. He chased it down and Ripken and got all the way to third. Here is Ursa Luck at the plate with a winning run at third and two down in the Baltimore 12th. Game on the line, tied to 1-1. The Gleaton pitches. Swing, fly ball to left. That's good in the inning. Mosby is there. He's got it and will go to the 13th still in a 1-1 tie. You know why National Sports Center in Windsor is the best place to shop for hockey equipment in the Midwest? The best selection, the lowest prices anywhere. At National Sports Center, you'll see huge displays of the finest hockey equipment. Names like CCM, Bauer, Micron, Coho, Cooper, Joppa, Louisville, and more. Every U.S. cash dollar is worth a full dollar fifteen at National Sports Center. And here's another important point that all hockey equipment shoppers should know. All sticks, skates, and protective hockey equipment is duty-free when brought from Canada to the United States. Just one visit to National Sports Center, you'll probably never shop for hockey equipment anywhere else again. Their helpful, knowledgeable staff of experts assure you the right fit every time, guaranteed. Get the best value on top of the line hockey equipment. Shop for every U.S. cash dollar is worth a full dollar fifteen. Visit National Sports Center located at the south end of the Devonshire Mall in Windsor. Call area 519-969-2526. This is meteorologist John McMurray, a tornado watch for the southern third of Lowell, Michigan, but at the present time, no severe weather. Stay tuned. If conditions change, we'll advise you. Here come the Tigers to bat now. It is an extra inning affair, and uh, we're going to the 13th inning with Bergman at bat, followed by Fryman and Nick Cavillia. Game dominated by excellent pitching. Messina started went nine for Baltimore. Olsen went two. Furworth is now in his second inning of activity. The Tigers have used Aldred, Gakler, Gibson, and the Gleaton, and all have done excellent work on the mound. No scoring since the second. The Tigers got a run with one out on the single by Fryman. He stole second, came home on Livingstone single. Davis led off the Baltimore second with a home run to tie the game, and it's been tied ever since then. Here comes Bergman, who has flied out three times and bounced to short. The Tigers have only four hits, and they've not had one since a two-out single by Kyler in the fifth inning. A long spell now for the Detroiters without a hit. Seven innings. So here's Bergman to try to break that spell against the right-handed Todd Froworth. And Todd delivers, and Dave takes the strike. It's been a good one. 1-1 one, one tie in the 13th inning. There's the strike called. He got a breaking ball over Haas is in the Tiger bullpen. Strike two pitch coming to Bergman. Watch out in close. It almost hit him. Latest we have on that game in San Francisco. The Giants lead the Dodgers 3-0 in the last half of third. The Giants are batting in the third. And the latter won their game earlier tonight. They beat Houston 5-2. to two. And the set and the pitch. He swings foul back to the press box. Right over there by Steve Kroll. Steve almost got one. One and two. That's the count on Bergman. 
Broward delivers. Here's a fastball. Though he checked his swing. Almost had him on that one. The count is 2-2. 1 1 tie. Tigers are batting in the 13th. Here's the 2 2 serve to Berglund. He swings and pops it foul. Well, you folks asking about our Ernie Harwell Foundation, it didn't get a chance maybe to attend the reception we had last week, but if you want to make a contribution to those scholarship funds, you can uh, do it by just sending a check to Ernie Harwell Foundation, Tiger Stadium, Detroit, 48216. The fastball low, and the count on Bergman is full. That's Tiger Stadium, Detroit, Michigan, 48216. Roworth ready, delivers, and Bergman swings, fouls it away. That's a line drive down into the left field corner. Now the batted Bergman steps out. Here's the set, and here's that 3-2 delivery. Swing, line drive, right center field. Might up, get up the gap. It does. Chased down by Devereaux to the wall. Bergman going for a double, and he has a stand-up two-bagger to get the Tigers started in the 13th. The first Tiger hit since the fifth inning. Man on second. He represents the lead run. Nobody down. Skeeter Barnes will come in to run for Bergman. There's the announcement by Rex Barney. Fryman, who has scored the only Tiger run, will be the batter. Stay tuned after the game. Paul Kerr is going to have all the scores for you. They may be all over by then. <laughs> 1-1 one, one tie. Fryman at the plate. He's had a single hit in the double play. Fly to center and struck out. He's bunting and the butt toward the mound. Fielded by the pitcher Froworth. He turns and fires to Bell. The second baseman covering the bag at first. It's a sacrifice. With Skeeter Barnes taking third. Right fielder. In Cavalia will be the batter. He's bounced out to third, to short, to third. And then the struck out. That gives him over for 4th for the night. Barnes is a pretty good runner. He's the Tiger man at third base now in this 1-1 tie. This is the best threat the team's had in the extra innings. Birds are going to bring their infield in against Incavelia. Barnes down the line. They set by Furworth. He pitches. There's a ground ball. Base hit to right field. Barnes will score on the right field single through the drawn-in infield. And the Tigers take the lead 2-1 to one in the 13th inning. Well, that's the penalty for drawing in your infield. You take a chance. That ball ordinarily is a fairly easy out to the second baseman. Livingstone, the batter, he's single. Fly to center, bounce to second, and bounce to second. Tigers would like to add down to that two to one margin in the 13th inning. Out a little bit to right on the left hand batting third sacker. One man on, one man out. And he takes a pitch outside. A double, a sacrifice, and a single. Getting the lead run home for Detroit. In too close for the fastball, 2-0. Kyler, the on-deck man for the Detroitists. 
The Dodgers are batting in the fourth inning at San Francisco, and the Giants lead them 3 nothing. Outside with a hook. 3-0 to count on Scott. Well, the RBIs for the Tigers have been provided by the bottom two men in the batting order. In Cabellian Livingstone. Strike called on Livingstone. He's taking all the way on that 3-0 delivery. Here's the set, and here's the pitch. Incavilia going ground ball at the second. The throw will be from Bell to Segui, but the hit and run keeps the Tigers out of the double play, and Incavilia gets the second. Here's Kyler, the leadoff man. The sixth time he's been in the plate. He's had one for the first five, a single. Tigers in the lead here, 2-1 to one of the 13th inning at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Infielders in and close on the Kyler. They are suspicious that he might want to bunt the ball. Pro work, the pitches, and Milt looks at a curve low and away, ball one. Cincinnati playing tonight in San Diego. They're tied 2-2 with the Padres in the fifth inning. Other night games in the American League. Kansas City and California scored us in the fourth. Seattle leads the White Sox 2-0 in the last half, the third. The 1-0 pitch. He swings. Ground ball first base. Backing up is Segui. Tosses to the pitcher forward. Getting Kyler for the final out. But the Tigers take the lead. 2-1 at the end of 12 and a half inning. Since when did you become so stylish? Well, I've always had a certain flair. Uh, you just never noticed. Oh, well, you've always been sort of... Traditional? Um, yeah, well, if that's what you want to call it. No, I still am. This is a Mercury Grand Marquis. You know? Right. So really, it's the 92 Mercury Grand Marquis. It doesn't look like a Grand Marquis. Trust me, it's a Grand Marquis. Oh. It, it says so right here. Oh. I mean, just look inside. You wow. see, it, lots of room, lots of comfort. Oh, I like that. More than before. Oh, and <laughs> under the hood, a new fuel-efficient 4.6-liter V8 engine for more horsepower, oh. less noise, greater economy. Oh, good. <laughs> Looking and smart. Why, thank you. Not you, the car. Oh, and here's the best part. The trunk? Just look. And what about these suitcases? Well, I'm taking you on a little trip. Oh, I like this new you. <laughs> Maybe you have changed. To my mother's. Huh? We're going to mother's. The 1992 Mercury Grand Marquis. Incredible style and comfort. Incredible low price. See Apollo Lincoln Mercury Ann Arbor, Arnold Roseville, Bob Bors Troy, or Heinz Park, Plymouth. 76. W-J-R. Three, the Tigers have the lead. Two to one, they're trying to protect it down the last half of the 13th inning with a new pitcher, David Haas. The right-handed takes over. Skeeter Barnes replaces uh, Bergman at first base. Gleaton is out. He did a good job. All the Tiger relievers have done a good job. And for the Baltimores, it'll be Evans, uh, Segui, and Lopez, the first three scheduled batters. They are trailing. It's the Tigers' two-run six hits. And the Birds have one run and eight hits. Well, the Dodgers got a run back in the top of the fourth inning and San Francisco leads Los Angeles 3-1. to one. The Dodgers are still batting in their fourth inning at San Francisco. And Atlanta beat Houston right earlier tonight. Right. Evans. Here's Evans against uh, David Haas, the Tiger right-hander. David delivers and Evans takes the ball outside. Haas has no one in law record. This will be his 10th appearance. All in relief. There's a strike called on uh, Dwight. One and one. Outside with a hard slider down and away. Two and one to count on him. 
Now the wind-up by the youngster. He pitches. Evans looks. There's a ball wide. Three and one. The line of bleak. Two innings pitched. One hit. One walk. Three strikes. Fast ball high. He walked him hard. Walked the first time he pitches. Segui, the next batter. David had three singles, and then they gave him an intentional walk in the ninth inning. He lined up with the second baseman, Whitaker, the last time at bat. Which batter batting left-handed? Let's see if the Birds want a bump now. They are trailing by a run. Two to one, Tigers in the last half of the 13th here at Memorial Stadium. He's got a bunt. There's a bunt, a good one toward third, and it is picked up by Livingstone. The throw to first, he's out. Throw to third, and the ball hits the runner. He is safe at third. Evan taking it all the way to third on the sacrifice. Oh, was that alert they play? Uh, caught the little toss on the bump from Livingstone and then uh, threw back to third to prime and covering but the throw hit the runner Evans as he headed toward third base oh it was Whitaker who covered first base not Barnes I beg your pardon and it was Lou's throw that uh, hit the runner now here comes Billy Muffet out It'll be a sacrifice for Segui. Well, Evans. Evans alertly saw nobody was covering third base. Uh, Livingstone tried to get back and he just simply couldn't get back in time and to handle that throw. See how the Tigers are going to play it. Now they're bringing in their infield. Not all the way in, but uh, about halfway up. The batter will be Leo Gomez. Right-hander against the right-hander. Haas in trouble. Tigers lead it 2-1 to one in the 13th. The man at third for the Birds and one man down. Gomez has had a fly to right and walk since he's ended the game. Takes and it's the ball outside. The Orioles are looking for at least a fly ball of some depth. The Tigers would like to get a strikeout here. This is a propitious moment for strikeout for the pitcher. And the 1-0 delivery. Big high curve. He doesn't bite on that one. 2-0 to count on Leo Gomez. Man at third is Evans. David Haas sets and pitches. There's a strike. He got a fastball over. Set and the pitch. He swings a line drive. Takes it right field. Evans will score. The game is tied. Gomez holds it first. He tripped as he came around first base and might have had a double on that one, but he couldn't hold his footing. And the game is retied. Two to two in the 13th. The Tiger lead evaporates. Chris Hoyles will be the batter. He's without a hit. Bounce the third, struck out, walk, bounce the second, and fly to right. One out, one on for Baltimore. That was a line drive single down into the right field corner. In Cavillia played it well off the carom. Swing and the ground ball to short. 
Ryman to Whitaker, one. Read it uh, first to Barnes. A double play, two for the price of one. And we go to the 14th inning in the Baltimore. The game tied, Detroit two, Baltimore two. In the next year, America plans on rocketing almost 50 people into space. The Japanese may launch their own manned space program. Plans for the world's first passenger space plane will zoom ahead. The world of space and flight is changing at warp speed. Air and Space Smithsonian Magazine lets you keep up with it all. Each issue of Air and Space Smithsonian offers you...